He's fine, baby. Yeah, I like.
today we learn of another death of a child related to this case we do expect a six count for first degree intentional homicide to be issued or added excuse me to this case our documents show a total of 62 people were injured during sunday's parade brooks has an extensive criminal history dating back to the 1990s 434 right now on this Wednesday morning. Westbrook High School is getting ready to reopen to five days a week in person for the first time in 20 months. More than a million dollars in renovations following a July fire kept the school closed this fall. The third floor art classroom where the fire happened has been redone along with several other classrooms and hallways that were damaged by water. Certainly it's going to be a transition for everybody. I think there's both uh, happy anxiety and I think there's some apprehension too. I think that um, certainly being back together with 800 people is not something people have done in a long time. The reopening will be phased in with two grades coming back at the at the same time starting next Wednesday. Everyone will be under one roof by the following Monday. That's December 6th. Come January 1st, there may be fewer firefighters responding to calls in Greenfield because they do not want to get the COVID-19 vaccine. The fire chief there says right now he has 34 volunteer firefighters on his roster. Nine have decided to not participate in the vaccine mandate, so they will not be allowed to go out on calls. The town manager says they can't force volunteers to get the shot and adds a mutual aid agreement with other towns means response times should not suffer. It's nothing personal. It's about numbers and, and risk assessment. Um, and we've determined that, that the biggest risk uh, right now is COVID. Uh, it's a bigger risk than having a few uh, lost volunteers. The hard deadline for the vaccine mandate is December 31st. The Reedfield chief is hoping that some of the volunteers may change their minds about rolling up their sleeves. The main CDC reporting nearly 1,100 additional cases of COVID-19. That covers Saturday through yesterday. 28 more people have died from the virus. 298 people are now in the hospital. That's the most so far for our state. 96 are in the ICU, also a record. Just under 68% of the state's total population is now fully vaccinated. And nearly a quarter of all kids, 5 to 11 years old, have their first dose. It is 436 right now. An Oxford County man will spend the rest of his life behind bars. Mark Penle getting two life sentences for killing his ex-girlfriend and her friend on New Year's night in Paris in 2019. Penle shot and killed Heather Bickford and Dana Hill in their apartment. Bickford and Hill's two children were there at the time, but they were not hurt. This morning, officials confirming Brian Laundry took his own life. Law enforcement spent seven weeks searching for him following the disappearance of his fiance, Gabby Petito. The couple went on a cross country road trip for Petito disappeared. Her body was later discovered and Laundry was considered a person of interest. He was never formally charged with her death. His remains were found in Florida last month. The Department of Justice is providing $800,000 to help solve cases involving missing or murdered indigenous people. The money will go toward forensic services and outreach programs. Another $90 million will be given in grants as well. This comes a week after President Biden called for more work to be done in addressing and preventing violence against Native American communities. A federal jury in Virginia has awarded more than $25 million to victims of violence stemming from the 2017 Charlottesville Unite the Right rally. A group of prominent white supremacist leaders also found liable on four counts relating to racially motivated violence. During a counter-protest the two-day rally, one woman was killed and dozens more were injured when a white nationalist demonstrator drove his car into the crowd. Time right now is 4.38. Today, jury deliberations continue in the trial of the killing of Ahmed Aubrey. Three Georgia men face nine charges, including murder, aggravated assaults, and false imprisonment. If convicted, Gregory McMichael, his son, Travis McMichael, and their neighbor, William Ronnie Bryan, could face life in prison. There are 11 white people and one black person on the jury. The judge spent nearly an hour giving them specific instructions on how to reach a verdict. President Biden announcing 50 million barrels of oil are being taken out, taken out of our national reserve. This is in an effort to bring gas prices down. The White House saying a major reason for surging fuel costs is oil producers have not increased supply quick enough. Some economists are skeptical that these reserve barrels will be enough to meet demand or noticeably impact prices. This morning, Mainers are paying an average of 345 at the pump.
Ken in the clouds, but roots right here in Maine coming up. We're hearing from a NASA engineer that's helping launch the latest spacecraft into space. And he says he owes it all to his own state. And a local dad is taking action to prevent overdose deaths here in our state. What prompted him to get out into his community? That's coming up too. And let's talk about your forecast before we head to break here. So take a live look outside. How's it going to? Yeah, a big travel day. A lot of folks hitting the road. A lot of folks going to the sky today.
in Greenville. The Moosehead Lake, boy, is it cold out there. So our wind chills this morning will feel like it's in the mid-teens. We definitely talked about that in 7 in Greenville. This is all kind of lining up to what it is right now, so pretty accurate. During the uh, afternoon and evening, well, it is going to feel a little cooler than the wind. It's not going to be as windy as yesterday. So folks going to be hitting the road or uh, getting kicked, coming into town. It's going to feel like 28 degrees. We have anything coming in from Florida or down south. It's going to be a little cold tonight. Uh, 29 degrees is what it will feel like in this cast. And then tomorrow, things will warm up. Clear skies on the satellite and radar. And as it widen things out, I'll show you that just a little bit to show you what's going on across the country. But high temperatures today will be a little bit warmer, but it still is quite blustery. You'll feel that wind out there by the end, but not quite as bad as yesterday. Now, tonight will be colder. We're going to get down to 19 in Thriver, 22 here in Portland, 27 in Wisconsin. So when you wake up on Thanksgiving morning for a turkey trial or morning run or activities, it's going to be cold. The guest of honor in the afternoon it does warm up. If you don't get out of the 40s, you're, you're going to be in the upper 40s most of the day. I think we touched 50 in Portland, 52 in Sanford, uh, 51 in Wisconsin on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, travel all across the Northeast and most of the country looks good. Same with Thursday. If you have folks traveling on Thanksgiving, that looks good. Now, Friday, Thursday night into Friday, we have a chance for rain moving in during the afternoon. There will be some mountain snow. There actually going to be some accumulating snow up in the county, but things look good for Saturday and Sunday with another little system potentially on Monday. So here's what's happening here. Thanksgiving Day is tomorrow. The countdown is on to 24 hours and counting, right? Uh, 50 degrees tomorrow looks good. It will be uh, cloudy. There will be often on rain for Black Friday shoppers or folks traveling. I think the snow is primarily for the mountains. There could be a little bit of wet snow in the morning and then again at night. Saturday looks cloudy in the morning, then clearing out, and then Sunday looks good. Sunday late night into Monday morning, we'll get a couple of snow showers, nothing big to worry about. And a week from today, December 1st. December 1st. I guess it's okay to do the Christmas things. Oh, tends to be okay, by the way. Do a little shady thing yeah. out of it, I guess. Maybe. But for some people, some of those families, yeah, that's actually a big part of Thanksgiving, is looking ahead to uh, yeah, Christmas right away. What's your favorite thing about Thanksgiving? I'm going to hear about it with your school. Oh, because I'm supposed to say friends and family. And being totally thankful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Stuffing, yeah. the drinking cats. And if you enjoy cooking, it's kind of like, you know, this is your yeah. day. You prep for it. You get ready. All year. Stretch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you've been getting ready. I've been getting ready. You've been baking pies. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. yeah, so busy. Good. Grinding the turkey. Yeah, it does. Oh, it does. Nice. The kitchen nice. is my domain. No one's been allowed in for a few days. So, shoot. Yeah, and get out of here. Don't go in. Probably a lot, of, a lot of people are cooking or saying exactly that. Get out. I'm ruining my space. <laughs> okay. All right, Ted, thank you so much. 447 right now. Bike sharing is coming to Portland. The city announcing a partnership with Tandem Mobility to launch a bike sharing program next summer. Bike stations will be set up around the city. For a few dollars, people will be able to rent a bike and return it to any station in town. The city and Tandem Mobility will look for places to put those stations along with sponsorships and naming rights ahead of next summer. Well, on a week where most of us will be celebrating with a big Thanksgiving dinner, Meals on Wheels is asking for help. Seniors Plus and Lewiston needs drivers for its Lisbon delivery route. New drivers will receive orientation training, and Seniors Plus reimburses vehicle expenses. Organizers say it's an important program because it's more than a meal. The delivery is a bonus check and a chance for people who are homebound to socialize. The route takes about two hours, four days a week. Proof of vaccination is required. If you're interested, reach out to Seniors Plus in Lewiston. The York County Shelter Program's food pantry is planning on handing out up to a thousand turkey dinners ahead of Thanksgiving. This is made possible in part to a new donation drive called Laura's Legacy of Love, which has raised a thousand dollars for the pantry. It was created in memory of Laura Cole, who died less than a year ago after surgery complications at just 33 years old. Laura often cooked meals for families in need, and this year her family wants to give back. The food pantry in Alfred will hand out meals to anyone today from 9 this morning to 3 this afternoon. This has actually helped us hold on to her a little bit, knowing that she's looking down at us and, and proud of us that um, all these people are getting food on Thanksgiving. The food pantry in Alfred will continue to hand out the meals to anyone who needs one. Again, they're open 9 until 3 this afternoon. 
NASA launched a new spacecraft very early this morning and it's on the collision course. The dark mission is headed to an asteroid where the spacecraft will crash into the rock to see if it can change the asteroid's course. And moments ago, NASA tweeted that the solar rays on the spacecraft have successfully unfurled the last milestone in a looks like a very successful launch. See how it goes. 449 right now. Well, it's not like something from a Bruce Willis movie, but it's actually reality. And one of the engineers for that NASA mission is from Maine. We had a chance to speak to Mark Jensenius yesterday. He's part of the team that designed a set of algorithms to direct the spacecraft from Earth, because obviously this is not an ideal mission for humans to be on board. He says teachers at Greeley High School were the ones that influenced him to take this path. Uh, a shout out to Tom Pasquarella and to Richard uh, Hopkinson. Uh, both of them, my, my physics and math teachers, did a great job of giving me the sort of fundamentals that set me on the course to where I am today. Mark's been working on this project for the past decade. It will now take 10 months for that spacecraft to reach the asteroid. And here's some good news that you're probably wondering this morning. NASA doesn't see asteroids being a threat to Earth in the next century. But of course, this mission will make sure they are ready in case. So it makes you feel a little bit better. A little bit better. Right. Hey, we don't have one coming this way. There's not a clock they take it down. Oh, okay. great. I like that. New Hampshire's Alan Shepard made history as the first American in space. And now his daughter will be part of the first generation of space tourists. Laura Shepard Churchley will be on board a Blue Origin flight next month. She'll be flying on the spacecraft named New Shepard after her father. Six passengers will be on board the December 9th trip, including Good Morning America anchor and former NFL player Michael Strahan. The flight will last 10 minutes, only five minutes less than Shepard's 1961 Mercury flight. That is so neat. <laughs> 51 right now we are checking back in the 10. It is a very busy travel day today. Yeah, traveling today? Just a little busy, right? 39 degrees and nice and sunny in Bangor. Up the county got more clouds until they windy up the lake on Port Harbor, 39 and sunny. Boston, 42 and sunny. Manchester, 43 and sunny. Burlington looking good. Hartford looking good too. New York City at 47. Chicago's in good shape today. So is DC. And now a little turkey dinner in Orlando, Florida. utilities during COVID, main housing and the emergency rental assistance programs are here to help. With new eligibility criteria, you can now receive assistance. Find help now at mainlandrelief.com. This might look like a cliffhanger. This is a Nissan sales event. There's something going on too.
business that you can do with home recommended. Don Fonche's discount tire alignment. There's a location near you. And Georgia Center, the first at full on Channel 8. Thanksgiving travel a little bit today. Looks great across Maine, New England, and much of the country. I'll show you what the forecast looks like. I'm high today, around 40 degrees here in Maine, uh, and uh, it looks clear today and tonight. It'll be very cold tonight. Now, if you're uh, traveling to uh, Chicago, Detroit, Memphis, or even down toward uh, Houston tomorrow, you're going to deal with rain through the Ohio River Valley Thursday, and then that gets closer to the area uh, on Thursday night. Now, Friday is a different story. So, uh, no travel delays today with weather wise uh, for uh, our, uh, our, our commute or uh, if you're going anywhere. Now, as we head toward Thursday morning, everything looks good. Midday looks good. Evening, off to the west, you're starting to see some minor delays because of weather. Friday morning, it's getting into New England. And then eventually by Friday afternoon and Friday night, we'll have some minor delays because of rain and the up to the north, some snow. So, here's a look at what our uh, travel forecast uh, and our, our total storm tracker is showing. Uh, that storm system we told you about for Friday, I'm going to go back to it. Uh, it is showing that uh, on uh, Friday comes in as a little bit of rain for the coastline in the afternoon and evening. The mountains and inland areas get a little snow, and especially up toward the county, looking good for the weekend. Now, I do want to point out uh, that the GFS normal has quite the situation for Monday across Maine. Well, keep an eye on that. Not buying that yet. You really caught our attention, both Kathy and I have yeah. frozen our tracks. And what are they? What? Hey, what's that? What's, what's going on? Hey, you know what? That's after Thanksgiving. Okay, yeah. so let's just let's focus on the holiday.
The Black Friday sale at FX Markup saves you an even more money. Find the comfort, quality, and design of room or house or furniture and take advantage of 12 months interest free payments with Black Friday savings. At FX Markup, live comfortably with the quality you can afford. If your organization would like to receive notification of job vacancies at Channel 8 WMTW, contact Donna Rideout in our Human Resources Department using the information on the screen. Being an oil company that offers excellent service, Rinaldi Energy in Saku was voted Best Tipping Oil Company, Best HVAC Company, and Best Customer Service for 2021. We're all switching to Rinaldi Energy. Are you switching? Rinaldi Energy, delivering a better experience. Here at the Bath Ray, just like Everrays location, we have the best car art with your car care at the best prices. We got full swing jackets, shirt line, fleece line, coat line, coat line cover ups, coat line, fit overalls. We have the car car rate and sweatshirt. We've got the pillow front and the zipper. Great color, vacation warm and dry. Great color, Thank you. Shop and ready. Black Friday sale with FX Markup Furniture saves you even more. Find your new flex deal and you could have it quick at Black Friday Savings. Save all month during the Black Friday sale at FX Markup. Live comfortably with quality you can afford. This is Sanchez joins us now here to explain this decision and also the reaction. Good morning, Adriana. 
Good morning. Effective immediately, the commissioner has suspended Central Maine Power's permit to build its 145 New England Clean Energy Connect Corridor project. CMP officials say they're disappointed with the decision and say they have gone to great lengths to mitigate the environmental impacts of the project. But the commissioner says the referendum earlier this month requires a suspension. Project opponents say this is a big win for Maine's environment. Sandy Howard, the director of the group, no CMP quarter, thanking everyone who, in, who initiated question one, voted, and the commissioner. The director of the Natural Resources Council of Maine Advocacy said, this is great news for the people of Maine and the environment, calling the project fatally flawed from the beginning. The fight over the corridor is not over, and ECEC still has a hearing next month in the Maine Business Court where it will argue the referendum itself is unconstitutional. Live in the newsroom, Adriana Sanchez, WTW News 8. Adriana, thank you. Happening now, there's pressure this morning to add a sixth count of homicide to the charges against the man police say drove an SUV into a Wisconsin holiday parade. This is after an eight-year-old died from his injuries. Police have arrested 39-year-old Daryl Brooks. He was in court yesterday, where the additional charge was brought before the judge. We learned of another death of a child related to this case. We do expect a sixth count for first degree intentional homicide to be issued or added, excuse me, to this case. Court documents show a total of 62 people were injured during Sunday's parade. Brooks has an extensive criminal history dating back to the 1990s. Westbrook High School is getting ready to reopen to five days a week in person for the first time in 20 months. More than a million dollars in renovations following a July fire kept the school closed this fall. The third floor art classroom where the fire happened has been redone, along with several other classrooms and hallways that were damaged by water. Certainly, it's going to be a transition for everybody. I think there's both uh, happy anxiety and I think there's some apprehension, too. I think that um, certainly being back together with 800 people is not something people have done in a long time. The reopening will be phased in with two grades coming back at the same time starting next Wednesday. Everyone will be under one roof by the following Monday. That's December 6th. Come January 1st, there may be fewer firefighters responding to calls in Reed Field because they don't want to get the COVID-19 vaccine. The fire chief there says right now he has 34 volunteer firefighters on his roster. Nine have decided not to participate in the vaccine mandate, so they will not be allowed to go out on calls. The town manager says they can't force volunteers to get the shot and adds a mutual aid agreement with other towns means response times should not suffer. It's nothing personal. It's about numbers and, and risk assessment. Um, and we've determined that, that the biggest risk uh, right now is COVID. Uh, it's a bigger risk than having a few uh, less volunteers. A hard deadline for the vaccine mandate is December 31st. The refilled chief is hoping that some of the volunteers change their minds about rolling up their sleeves. The main CDC is reporting nearly 1,100 additional cases of COVID-19 that covers Saturday through yesterday. 28 more people have died from the virus. 298 people are now in the hospital, the most so far for our state. 96 are in the ICU. That's also a record. Just under 68% of the state's total population is now fully vaccinated. And nearly a quarter of all kids ages 5 to 11 years old have their first dose. It's not just here in Maine. Much of New England is seeing the worst surge since the pandemic began. In New Hampshire, Governor Chris Sununu signed an executive order to allow hospitals to add surge capacity. And state officials say they're preparing for the very likely possibility of needing to call up the National Guard to assist. Governor Sununu describing the Granite State in an emergency situation when it comes to their health care system. And Massachusetts officials telling hospitals to once again postpone non-urgent procedures to keep a certain cushion of available hospital beds for emergencies. It's not just because of COVID, although the big state has seen a rise there as well. Hospital leaders say it's also because of delayed care, meaning sicker patients and longer hospital stays. Add on to that shortage of healthcare workers. An expansion project is underway at Maine Medical Center, and it could be getting bigger. The hospital wants to add more beds to the Malone family tower. The new building will provide state-of-the-art procedure rooms for cardiovascular care. The hospital also hopes to add a new sterile processing department. The modifications would add about $52 million to the overall cost for a total of more than $588 million. The new tower is expected to be open in 2023. 
time wait right now on this Wednesday morning. It's a big day as millions of Americans are already hitting the road ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday. And airports are expected to see the largest surge in travelers since the start of the pandemic this week. But troubles at airports and a rise in COVID-19 cases are raising some concerns. ABC's M. Lynn is in Washington for this morning, an early glimpse of the frustration some Americans will face when they join the Thanksgiving travel rush. Like these long lines of cars outside the airport in Phoenix last night. The GSA expects the number of travelers will reach pre-pandemic highs this week. More than 2 million people are expected to fly today alone. Airlines are preparing for most planes to be at full capacity as the federal mask mandate fills an increase in mid-air altercations. We're seeing unruly behavior on our eyes, so we want to make sure that we're working um, and communicating effectively, but also understanding that there's mandates. The travel rush comes as the airline industry struggles to recover from a worker shortage. Both the TSA and the airlines say they've booked up staffing and insist they're ready. And now, new concern about the holiday fueling a surge in COVID cases. New infections are up 42% nationwide in the last month. New York is now averaging its highest number of new cases since February. And in Colorado, hospitals in the Denver area are 95% full. Emergency rooms are routinely diverting patients because they simply don't have the capacity to take care of people who need help. Now back to the airports. Here's another worry for some travelers. Police in Portland, Oregon are now warning about thieves stealing catalytic converters from parked cars at the airport. They say the thieves are reselling the metal inside. And when ABC News, Washington. And it's 5:10 this morning. An Oxford County man will spend the rest of his life behind bars. Mark Penlake getting two life sentences for killing his ex-girlfriend and her friend on New Year's night in Paris in 2019. Penlake shot and killed Heather Bickford and Dana Hill in their apartment. Bickford's two children were there at the time, but were not hurt. 5:10 right now on this Wednesday morning. Coming up, your dollar won't be going as far at the dollar store in the new year. The dollar tree, the next change of high prices due to inflation, and it's the first time the company has increased its price in 30 years. And as we kick off one of the busiest travel days of the year, but also means one of the busiest days for scammers to plan their attacks. The new Russell reports has tips on how to protect yourself from scams as you head home for the holidays. Now let's check in if we all just tend that pretty much again. Hey, if you're uh, driving uh, in or out of Portland this morning, that's probably the best skill for a while. Hey, no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Things look great. Hey, uh, well, uh, it's going to take you a while to get there. Eh? <laughs> it's not about the industry. Not going to work for you. It's a cold out there this morning. This morning at 9 on Channel 8.
Picking local makes all the difference. Your main business. We're a main bank. Let's get to work. Chapter 11 Furniture. You buy it today, you get it today. If you need furniture, come to Chapter 11 Furniture. We've got so much inventory. Chapter 11 is offering special no credit needed financing. Chapter 11 in Lewiston delivers everywhere.
Dollar Tree is known for its $1 price tag for all products, but not anymore. The bargain chain is raising its prices for the first time in three decades. By the beginning of 2022, items will be a dollar and 25 cents. Dollar Tree says this price hike will give them more flexibility to bring back customer favorites and also introduce new items. They say the increase will also help with freight and distribution costs, as well as wage increases. Another company hiking prices, General Mills, which means your favorite bowl of cereal could cost you more in the new year. The company is raising costs on hundreds of its products in 2022. Cereals like Cheerios and Lucky Charms are included in the increase, along with items from brands like Progressive and Pillsbury. Prices are expected to go up around 20% starting in mid-January. Unruly airline passengers are going to have to pay up. The FAA announced fines Monday for disruptive passengers and fines for eight flyers total more than $161,000. One passenger accounts for a quarter of the total charged with $41,000 for illegally bringing their own alcohol onto the plane. That's the third highest total since the FAA introduced its zero tolerance policy. This newest set of fines comes as the airline industry prepares to handle an estimated 20 million travelers over this Thanksgiving holiday. 519 right now and this morning as we kick off the big travel day, an urgent alert as scammers look to cash in on this holiday travel season. Our chief national course, consumer correspondent Jeff Rawson has the red flags that you need to look out for. Jeff. Hi, welcome to Rawson in 60. The FBI is out with an urgent new scam warning today, but I have tips on how to protect yourself. And all I need is 60 seconds of your time. Let's start the clock. Travel scams are expected to skyrocket this holiday season. Since travel prices are high, scammers, the FBI says, will be offering deals that are too good to be true. They do this, as you know, over email. And I get a ton of them over text where you just kind of get a few words. Uh, and then a link, and it's a short link, so it doesn't look fake, and it looks real on top, too. You should say no. Scammers will send anything to get you to click on a malicious link or to reel you in by, to pay the money. I'm going to put more tips from the FBI on my website, but just look out for this, because with the holidays coming and all the holiday travel, the scammers are out there. It's going up, and the FBI, that Ross reports, want you to stay safe. Keep your money. Back to you. Best Buy is increasing security at its stores nationwide to protect against an increase of looting. The retailer CEO says some recent incidents have involved looters using guns, crowbars, and other weapons. As a result, Best Buy is now locking up merchandise and hiring more security guards. The increase in burglaries is hitting the company in their pocketbook. Best Buy stock dropped 12% yesterday. Apple is suing an Israeli company, the NSO Group, maker of spyware that can be secretly loaded onto iPhones. Apple's accusing the company of misusing its products and services. Critics say the spyware, called Pegasus, has been sold to some countries who have then used it against human rights activists and journalists. Well, sales may be at the places like Best Buy and Dick's Sporting Goods compared to last year, but e-commerce sales have slowed down. With more shoppers back into stores after the COVID-19 restrictions are lifted Online sales at Best Buy dropped in the last quarter compared to last year. Online sales at Dick's stayed flat. 521 right now, the uh, orange are coming from the forecast. Today just seems a little bit more important. Yeah, we're definitely looking at the national travel uh, hazards uh, later this week, but not today. For us, much of the Northeast and Atlantic states are all good. And that Thursday looks good. There's a rain coming in from the Midwest out toward Detroit, a uh, little bit in that through Ohio, and then by Thursday night, it arrives in west of western New England. Then we'll get some rain and mountain snow here on Friday. It will be kind of slippery up in the mountains and up north on Friday night, Friday afternoon, Friday night. And it's Saturday morning that things look good for the week. And I like to always see we might be dealing with a little bit of snow on Monday.
huge savings on the entire lineup of award-winning Hyundai vehicles at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. With new cars arriving just in time for the holidays, it's the perfect time to get a Hyundai. Now it's you for setting PR on select all-wheel drive models or side and drive one home. Hurry in today. No two clients, car accidents, or injuries are the same. At Man Law, we are focused on you and how your case affects your life. If you want a strong advocate who knows the insurance industry inside and out and is going to help you navigate this difficult time in your life, then hire Man Law. Every case is unique, and personal injury is just that. It's personal. This is about so much more than the compensation you deserve. Call us for a free consultation. Man Law, injury lawyers focused on you. Do you need holiday cash? Maine Gold and Silver can help. For more than 50 years, we've been one of the largest buyers of modern and vintage jewelry, coins, bullion, and silver. We have the knowledge and experience to offer you the highest prices. Maine Gold and Silver, South Portland. Looking for trucks? The O'Connor Auto Park has well over 200 new and used trucks. Chevy Trail Bosses, 15 Trail Bosses on the law. Plus, GMC Denali and AT4. Here's a 2018 Chevy Silverado LT, four-wheel drive crew cab, almost new, just $35,980. O'Connor is Wayne's truck leader with well over 200 new and used trucks. O'Connor, Chevy Buick GMC, XM 113 Augusta, online at O'ConnorAutoPark.com. Closed captioning of WMTW brought to you by Bernie and Phil's Furniture. Check out our selection of quality furniture online or at our South Portland store. Hi, everybody. We're looking at our hunting forecast for today. Sunny. Pressure's high. It's a little windy. That we plus three out there sunset at 407. And you're hunting on Thanksgiving Day, 50 degrees. Uh, mostly uh, sunny in most uh, spots will be some top of the mountains. So uh, it'll be cloudy by Thursday night. And Friday looks like a cloudy, kind of uh, cool day. But uh, we're looking at some rain, maybe even some rain, snow in the interior. And then, yes, yeah, some snow showers in the mountains for the afternoon and evening. And Saturday, the snow showers in the mountains wrap up. Should be a good looking day on Saturday. Now, as far as travel goes for today, uh, the only issues uh, this morning are out in the uh, uh, Idaho, uh, Wyoming, and into uh, Montana. So today, midday, look at much of the country that all that green means good to go. And uh, I like that even tonight. There's a little bit of an issue out toward areas of Kansas City and Oklahoma City and Dallas, but the minor. Tomorrow morning, a little bit of an issue down in Arkansas, down toward Houston, but no real issues and through uh, minor uh, weather in Chicago in Detroit for Thursday and morning and Thursday and midday. Thursday evening is getting closer to us, but then as we head toward Friday morning, things look good. And then I do have to uh, go back and show you what's going on uh, for Friday. I didn't have it all the way uh, there. I want to show you the rest of that. Uh, as we head toward Friday afternoon, things uh, look a little bit uh, minor. And then uh, off to our north, up to the county, of minor issues because of snow. Friday evening in northern Maine. Uh, and as far as the weather pattern, you can see it's nice and clear today and tomorrow, and then there comes that rain and mountain snow for Friday. Uh, and then the weekend looks real good. And then we got to watch this little system come our way for Monday. Okay, keep your eyes on that. That's definitely a traveler's dream to see the whole country green there. I've never yeah. seen it. Yeah, no issue. It's a perfect timing. Okay, Ted, thank you. Well, this week we're going to give you lots of tips on celebrating the holiday season and the best ways to enjoy your Thanksgiving meal. And this morning we do have some advice on what not to do when preparing your turkey tomorrow. Take a look. Wow. That happened so quickly, too. Wow. No, the fire department there in Fresno, California, doing this as an experiment to show people what not to do when you're frying a frozen turkey. They made all of the most common mistakes at once, like filling the pot with too much oil, turning the heat up way too high, and not letting the bird thaw. And that was the result. Mm, yeah, definitely a really dangerous situation. The fire department said Thanksgiving is one of the busiest days for fires in the country. They warn folks to wear protective clothing and shoes while frying their birds and to do the frying in an open space away from other people and children can be really dangerous. Yeah, they also advise having a thermometer and a fire extinguisher handy, but hopefully you won't have to use it. You know, it is, uh, of course, this is such an important day. You want it to be the best mm -hmm. meal, but sometimes if you have not done it before, this is not the day to try it. Yeah, definitely don't. Or just have an extra bird in the, uh, the fridge ready to go. And yes, we said, be careful. It's <laughs> 28 right now. We're back in two minutes.
The furniture superstore. The furniture superstore. The furniture superstore. Like Rocky Furniture and Matthews Weekend Blowout. That's right. Get to the furniture superstore and take advantage of huge savings in all departments. Plus, get doorbuster specials on all furniture and mattresses. The furniture superstore. Don't miss it. Like five of the Moosehead Lake. 
21 is our wind chill. It was cast down under clear skies across Maine and uh, most of the New England. It looks good across the country today. Wind chill forecast today. This is what it's going to feel like out your door. Getting those wind little gusts occasionally to 30 today. Uh, it's pretty gusty from uh, the northwest. Uh, by uh, 2 o'clock, it'll feel like 31. It'll feel like 28 at 5. And then tomorrow morning, 26. So it's still going to be cold Thanksgiving morning drop early. But we do have a nice rebound coming away for Thanksgiving Day during the afternoon. All right, let's take a look at traffic. Uh, big uh, day for traffic outside. I don't see any issues as of right now. Keeping an eye out for the turn for you. Look at that. Best it's going to look. That's why those folks that wake up early, they say it's crazy to wake up early and get on the road. Well, that's what you get if you wake up early. Nobody on the road. Looking good across the area. Green all the way down into New Hampshire on the turnpike. Not going to look like that all day today. Uh, all across the greater Portland area, looking good. And, and if you are uh, up and you got to go to work and you're about to uh, hit the road maybe later tonight, make sure you check back with Roger Griswold tonight. She's going to be looking at these traffic maps, and I guarantee you it's not going to be green. Uh, as we uh, go up toward the north uh, in Lewis and Auburn, all good this morning. And Augusta, you're looking mighty fine this morning. And hopefully we can keep the green there all day. <laughs> okay, Jeff, thank you. Well, as you are enjoying the holiday weekend, make sure you have the WMCW app so you can bring the forecast with you wherever you go. And check to see if the weather will impact any of your plans. 534 right now. This morning, CFD's permit to build this power corner through Western Maine suspended by the state. WMTW News 8's Adriana Sanchez is here to explain this decision and the reaction after it. Good morning, Adriana. Good morning. After the public hearing on Monday, it took the commissioner less than 24 hours to issue her decision to suspend the CMP's 145-mile corridor permit effective immediately. She calls a referendum earlier this month a change in the situation that requires suspension. They do have 30 days to complete some cleanup work like spreading out wood chips, covering unfinished foundations, and stabilizing all corridor access roads. Of course, CMP already stopped work last week. Now the DEP does say the license will be reinstated if the courts rule in favor of CMP. Project CEO Lord Dickinson tells us they are disappointed with the decision, adding that there is real and serious need for this project to address climate change. He said the main DEP itself concluded that climate change was the single biggest threat to Maine's environment. The fight over the corridor is not over, and ECEC still has a hearing next month in the main business court where, where it will argue that the referendum itself is unconstitutional. Coming up, I'll have a reaction from the corridor opponents. Live in the newsroom, Adriana Sanchez, WTW News 8. Adriana, thank you. Happening now, there's pressure to add a sixth count of homicide to the charges against the man police say drove an SUV into a Wisconsin holiday parade. This after an eight-year-old has died from his injuries. Police have arrested 39-year-old Daryl Brooks. He was in court yesterday, where this additional charge was brought before the judge. Hey, we learned of another death of a child related to this case. We do expect a sixth count for first degree intentional homicide to be issued or added, excuse me, to this case. Court documents show a total of 62 people were injured during Sunday's parade. Brooks has an extensive criminal history dating back to the 1990s. 36 right now, this Thanksgiving looks maybe more normal thanks to vaccinations and boosters. More family and friends are getting together this year and traveling for the first time in months. I see the answers at Washington Bureau this morning and I said, what should we know before we hit the road? Christina, you can expect long lines at the airport and busy roads. That's typical for Thanksgiving, but this year there could be some extra inconveniences. <sighs> Americans are thankful for a more normal holiday this year after a long pandemic. AAA predicts more than 48 million people in the U.S. will drive out of town and more than 4 million will fly. It's going to be more like a 2019 because travel was really crushed last year. People, you know, there were no vaccines. People were very uncertain. There were a lot of restrictions. While many restrictions have been lifted, if you're traveling by air, you still have to wear a mask at the airport and on your flight. A safety requirement that's led to various clashes inside the cabin. The rate in which they are acting out is at a frequency that is way out of hand. Flight attendants say they've endured sexist, racist, and homophobic insults from passengers, the threat of violence, and in some cases, physical attacks. At best, these individuals are creating a horrible experience for everyone. At worst, they are putting the safety and security of everyone traveling at risk. 
If you're driving this holiday, you may feel it in your wallet. The national average for a gallon of gas is $3.40, but prices vary drastically from coast to coast. It's still under $3 in Oklahoma, but people out on the West Coast, like California, they're paying well over $4, close to $5. We have found traditionally that no matter what gas prices are, once people have decided they're going to go on a trip, they're going to go on that trip. Oil prices have started to come down in recent days, and President Biden has just announced he's tapping into U.S. oil reserves next month to bring drivers some relief. In Washington, I hate to do yes to the MTW News 8. 538 right now, Westbrook High School is getting ready to reopen to five days a week in person for the first time in 20 months. More than a million dollars in renovations following a July fire kept the school closed this fall. The third floor art classroom where the fire started has been redone, along with several other classrooms and hallways that were damaged by water. Certainly it's going to be a transition for everybody. I think there's both uh, happy anxiety and I think there's some apprehension too. I think that um, certainly being back together with 800 people is not something people have done in a long time. The reopening will be phased in with two grades coming back at the same time starting next Wednesday. Everyone will be under one roof by the following Monday, December 6th. Come January 1st, there may be fewer firefighters responding to calls in Greenfield because they don't want to get the COVID-19 vaccine. The fire chief says that right, right now he has 34 volunteer firefighters on his roster. Nine have decided not to participate in the vaccine mandate, so they will not be allowed to go out on calls. The town manager says they can't force volunteers to get the shot. And he adds a mutual aid agreement with other towns means response times should not suffer. It's nothing personal. It's about numbers and, and risk assessment. Um, and we've determined that, that the biggest risk uh, right now is COVID. Uh, it's a bigger risk than having a few uh, less volunteers. The hard deadline for the vaccine mandate is December 31st. The refill chief is hoping that some of the volunteers will change their mind about rolling up their sleeves. The main CDC is reporting nearly 1,100 additional cases of COVID-19. That covers Saturday through yesterday. 28 more people have died from the virus. 298 people are now in the hospital. That's the most so far for our state. 96 are in the ICU. That's also a record. Just under 68% of the state's total population is now fully vaccinated. And nearly a quarter of all kids, 5 to 11 years old, have their first dose. An Oxford County man will spend the rest of his life behind bars. Mark Penland getting two life sentences for killing his ex-girlfriend and her friend on New Year's night in Paris in 2019. Penland shot and killed Heather Bickford and Dana Hill in their apartment. Bickford's two children were there at the time, but were not hurt. 540 right now on this Wednesday morning. We head in the clouds, but roots right here in Maine. Coming up, we're hearing from a NASA engineer that's helping launch the latest spacecraft into space. And he says he owes it all to his home state. And a local dad is taking action to prevent overdose deaths. What prompted him to head out into his community? That's coming up too. And let's talk about your forecast once again with the all just stand back for me because he's taking off the world. Take that. Yeah, I'm gonna keep an eye on this for the uh, day today a little bit more than we normally do because of uh, the busy travel day today. And you're seeing green on the turnpike from Augusta all the way down to the Massachusetts border. It's not gonna be like that all day. Can you see the metal roots? Get the best metal roof available with a beautiful look of shingles, shake, or the classic look of metal from Maine Metal Roofing. The Florida and Ice Dams roof shoveling and reducing some of the costs while the trees you lose beauty and value and receive 50% off flavor. Zero gap financing available with low monthly payments. And we're installing all winter. Call 207 Mine Metal or visit MainMetalRoofers.com and have your roof installed soon. That's 207 Mine Metal. Do you know what Friday is? Yes, it's Black Friday. And where can you find the best Black Friday deals and steals? Sorry, you are the best. Live only for GMA viewers. Up to 75% off with free shipping. It's Good Morning America's Black Friday deals and steals blowout. I did some really shopping this year. One for you, one for me. <sighs> I love it. I got this little something too. Yeah. Yep. One for you and one for me. I love it. Oh, actually, that one. I love it. Set starting at $199.99. Find something.
Happy for everyone on your next Find yours at steeldealers.com. The furniture ship is on. The furniture ship is on. The furniture ship is on. Black Friday furniture and mattress weekend blowout. That's where I get to the furniture superstore and take advantage of huge savings in all departments, plus get doorbuster specials on all furniture and mattresses. The furniture superstore. Ah! Don Funche's discount turn lineman, 40 years of full service auto care. Our job is to keep your vehicle reliable so you feel good and you feel safe. Take care of the top tire brands led by Cooper Tire at discount prices and added value. And no one beats the Funche out the door price. Cooper Tires, alignments, brakes, shocks, exhaust, heating and cooling, we've got it all. This is a you can feel good about recommending. Dumb Fauché's discount tire alignment. There's a location near you. The furniture ship is over. The furniture ship is over. The furniture ship is over. Black Friday furniture and mattress weekend blowout. That's right. Huge savings store wide. Plus get 0% financing on our massive selection of in stock furniture and mattresses. The furniture ship is over. It is 544 right now as we take a live look here from our West Goldman Skycam. Uh, beautiful start to, to the day, obviously. <laughs> Feels looking. I was just going to say. It's feeling is a different, different story. You know, they just saying to someone the other day, normally by now I think we're pretty used to it, but we've had so many chances for <laughs> really warmer yes. days. It's, it's an adjustment. We've been spoiled so much yeah. that we do have the kind of normal temperatures. We say, what is this? What's right. going on? Uh, Where should be? Uh, yeah, a couple of those weather exposed in the morning. I was ready for it. <laughs>
running, dancing, twerking, but now he's just right there on Thursday. Trying to get lean and mean. There we go. Time's up. We appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Show 548 right now. Bike sharing is coming to Portland. The city announcing a partnership with Tandem Mobility to launch a bike sharing program next summer. Bike stations will be set up all around the city. For a few dollars, people will be able to rent a bike and return it to any station in town. The city and Tandem Mobility will look for places to put those stations along with sponsorships and naming rights ahead of next summer. On a week where most of us will celebrate with a big Thanksgiving dinner, Meals on Wheels is asking for your help. Seniors Plus enlisted needs drivers for its Lisbon delivery route. New drivers will receive orientation training, and Seniors Plus reimburses vehicle expenses. Organizers say it's an important program because it's more than a meal. The delivery is a wellness check and a chance for people who are homebound to socialize. The route takes about two hours, four days a week. Proof of vaccination is required. If you're interested, reach out to Seniors Plus in Lewiston. The York County Shelter Program's food pantry is handing out a hunt, uh, up to a thousand turkey dinners ahead of Thanksgiving. And this is made impossible in part because of a new donation drive called Laura's Legacy of Love, which is raised a thousand dollars for the pantry. It was created in memory of Laura Paul, who died less than a year ago of surgery complications at just 33 years old. Laura often cook meals for families in need, and this year her family wants to give back. This has actually helped us hold on to her a little bit, knowing that she's looking down at us and, and proud of us that um, all these people are getting food on Thanksgiving. The food pantry and Alfred will continue to hand out meals to anyone that needs one. Today, they're open from 9 in the morning to 3. 549 right now this Wednesday morning. NASA launched a new spacecraft early this morning and it's on a collision course. It's all on purpose. This is the plan. The DART mission is headed to an asteroid where the spacecraft will crash into the rock to see if it can change the asteroid's course. Moments ago, NASA tweeted that the solar arrays on the spacecraft have successfully unfurled. That's the last milestone in what they're considering a really successful launch. And it may sound like something from a Bruce Willis movie, but this is this is reality. It's happening. And one of the engineers on this mission is actually from Maine. I spoke with Mark Jensenius yesterday. He's part of the team that designed a set of algorithms to direct that spacecraft from here on Earth, because obviously this is not ideal, even if it was Bruce Willis, to be on board, to have humans on board. And he's actually saying that his teachers at Greeley High School influenced him to take this path. Uh, a shout out to Tom Pasquarella and to Richard uh, Hopkinson. Uh, both of them, my, my physics and math teachers, did a great job of giving me the sort of fundamentals that set me on the course to where I am today. Mark has been working on this project for the past decade. It will now take about 10 months for the spacecraft to reach the asteroid. And here are some good news. NASA says they don't see asteroids being a threat to Earth in the next century, but this mission will make sure they are ready. That's incredible. And to see what science can do. I know. And now I have Aerosmith in my head. Anybody else? <laughs> no? Am I great, alone? great movie. Not her, right? Yeah. It's classic. Yeah, it's a classic one out there. 551 right now on this Wednesday morning. Good morning, Americans. Up an hour away. With a look at what they're working on, here's ABC's Ariel Russia. In this morning's GMA first look, fighting for their family. Mm -hmm. So thank God out of the NICU, we have had them with us every second. Um, but we are still not listed on the birth certificate as their parents. Tammy and Jordan Myers telling People Magazine that they had their babies Ames and Ellison via surrogate last January. But laws surrounding surrogacy in their home state of Michigan require families to legally adopt their own biological children. We had a meeting with um, an adoption agency to start the process. And she looked at me point blank and said, well, you are not the mother. You have to go through background checks, a lot of rigorous things that you normally have to go through when you're doing an adoption process for uh, a child that's not your own. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have more on the minor struggle and their message to others exploring surrogacy. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Redchef, ABC News, New York. <laughs> And look at our travel forecast. It's going to be partly sunny uh, to mostly sunny and cool and blustery today. Looking good for that busy travel day today. Now, tomorrow, Thanksgiving Day, sunny a little bit warmer, especially down in Boston and New York. And then Friday, things change. Rain expected here in Maine and across New York and Boston. Uh, so we can see some snow Friday afternoon, Friday night in our mountain and northern communities. Big news for Harvard.
different suburbs. Introducing Zantac 360 degrees with a new formula that has the number one doctor recommended medicine approved to both prevent and relieve heartburn. It works in as little as 15 minutes and lasts. New Zantac 360. What makes the Breeze Air different? Well, cheaper air results rely on our initial propellants, but Breeze uses a 100% natural propellant. Check it out. Pressure created by what's in your air makes the bottle spray, which means freshness everyone will love.
much, but a local dad is taking action to prevent overdose deaths. This is as 2021 is on pace to become another record-breaking year for deadly overdoses, both here in Maine and across the country. Jim Rodman distributes the overdose reversal medication, Narcan. After losing his adult son, Maxwell, to an overdose in 2018, he's become a harm reduction advocate. He picks up Narcan from the Portland Needle Exchange and offers it to anyone, even making deliveries. I was unable to save my son, I can save other people, help other people, so we don't have to go through the uh, what I went through. Between January and September of this year, Maine saw 455 deadly overdoses. That's nearly a 20% increase over 2020. If you or someone you know is struggling with substance use disorder, help is not limited to just Portland. You can call 211 to get connected with services near you. 558 right now, still on almost Wednesday morning. We're getting traffic much kind of coming up today. More than 2 million people are expected to fly as officials are raising concerns about the spread of COVID-19 across the country. And right now we're taking a live look from our from the sky cam as we have this kind of beautiful sunrise ahead of us. We have great colors popping up. We're back in two minutes. Stay with us. Superstore and take advantage of huge savings in all departments, plus get door buster specials on all furniture and mattresses. The Furniture Superstore. Don't miss it. It's the Black Friday sale at Lady Willingham. This year, shop shoes and kits for the whole family with 20% off store wide. The sale starts November 20th and goes to November 28th, giving you a whole week of great Black Friday deals. Don't wait too long. Some of our most sought after brands are included in the sale. Come shop safely at store at your local Lady Willingham.
degree wind chills this morning. So you want to layer up, bundle up, especially if you're going to, you know, gonna run into the rest stop or anything. Uh, it's going to be cold. <laughs> you're going to be dealing with that. You also should be prepared for anything, whether you have any car issues or traffic, uh, where you could be bundled up today. Uh, 40 degrees by 1 o'clock, but 36 by 4 o'clock getting dark very early. So we get our sunrise here, but 28 degrees clear. Winds are gusting from the northwest to 24. That makes it feel like 16 right now. Woo! Pretty brutal. 25 in Lewiston, Auburn. 25 in Augusta. 26 in Sanford. 13 in Freiburg. Luckily, not much wind there. The winds have died down a little bit here, but you can see our wind chills. 15 in Sanford. 15 in Auburn. 21 in Wisconsin. Clear skies on our satellite and radar picture. Looking good across the northeast. Now a wind chill forecast. Northwest winds continue today, gusting to maybe 20, 25 through the afternoon. It will feel like low degrees, even though we get to 40 degrees today. And then uh, by tomorrow morning, it will feel like 27. The winds are going to be calm, though, luckily, so there won't be much of a uh, wind chill factor for tomorrow. All right, let's look at traffic now. A busy, busy, busy day today. And, uh, if you're out early this morning, uh, yes, that's the time to go. That you, you, you deserve the prize of waking up early and no traffic because we are green and good to go across the area. Before your kidney and folks are working today, go to Portland 19 minutes, Hollis to Portland at 22, 25 minutes, and Auburn to Portland, you're looking at 29 minutes right now. Now check back with us, especially if you're hitting the road after work today. Uh, you can always do it on our mobile app. Uh, we will get an update on our traffic. Uh, through the 4 p.m., 5 p.m., and 6 p.m. shows today, and uh, I guarantee we won't see uh, green everywhere. Yeah, so enjoy now. You can leave now. We have time to leave. Okay, so thank you. This morning, CMB's permit to build its power corridor through Western Maine is suspended by the state. WMTW News 8, Adrian Sanchez, joins us now live in the newsroom, explaining the decision and the reaction here. Good morning, Adrian. Good morning. Well, effective immediately, the commissioner has suspended Central Maine Power's permit to build its 145-mile New England Clean Energy Connect corridor project. CMP officials say they're disappointed with the decision and say they have gone to great lengths to mitigate the environmental impacts of the project. But the commissioner says the referendum earlier this month requires a suspension. Project opponents say this is a big win for Maine's environment. Sandy Howard, the director of the group No CMP Corridor, thanking everyone who initiated question one, voted, and the commissioner. The director of the Natural Resources Council of Maine Advocacy says this is great news for the people of Maine and the environment, calling the project fatally flawed from the beginning. Now the fight over the corridor is not over, and ECEC still has a hearing next month in the Maine Business Court where it will argue that the referendum itself is unconstitutional. I'm in the newsroom, Adriana Sanchez, WGW News 8. Adriana, thank you. Happening now, there's pressure this morning to add a sixth count of homicide to the charges against the man police say drove an SUV into a Wisconsin holiday parade. This is after an eight-year-old died from his injuries. Police have arrested 39-year-old Daryl Brooks. He was in court yesterday when the additional potential charge was brought before a judge. Today, we learned of another death of a child related to this case. We do expect a sixth count for first degree intentional homicide to be issued or added, excuse me, to this case. Court documents show a total of 62 people were injured during Sunday's parade. Brooks has an extensive criminal history dating back to the 1990s. Westbrook High School is getting ready to reopen to five days a week in person for the first time in 20 months. More than a million dollars in renovations following a July fire kept the school closed this fall. The third floor art classroom where the fire happened has been redone, along with several other classrooms and hallways that were damaged by water. Certainly, it's going to be a transition for everybody. I think there's both uh, happy anxiety and I think there's some apprehension, too. I think that... Um, certainly being back together with 800 people is not something people have done in a long time. The reopening will be phased in with two grades coming back at the same time starting next Wednesday. Everyone will be under one roof by the following Monday. That's December 6th. Come January 1st, there may be fewer firefighters responding to calls in Wheatfield because they don't want to get the COVID-19 vaccine. The fire chief there says right now he has 34 volunteer firefighters on his roster. Nine have decided not to participate in the vaccine mandate, so they will not be allowed to go out on calls. The town manager says they can't force volunteers to get the shot. And as a mutual aid agreement with other towns means response times should not suffer.
it's nothing personal. It's about numbers and, and risk assessment. Um, and we've determined that, that the biggest risk uh, right now is COVID. Uh, it's a bigger risk than having a few uh, lost volunteers. The hard deadline for the vaccine mandate is December 31st, and the Richfield chief is hoping that some of the volunteers may change their minds about rolling up their sleeves. The main CDC is reporting nearly 1,100 additional cases of COVID-19. See the graph right there. It covered Saturday through yesterday. 28 more people have died from the virus. 298 people are now in the hospital, the most so far for our state. 96 are in the ICU. That's also a record. Just under 68% of the state's total population is now fully vaccinated. And nearly a quarter of all kids ages 5 to 11 years old have their first dose. It's not just here in Maine. Much of New England is seeing the worst surge since the pandemic began. In New Hampshire, Governor Kristen Nunu signed an executive order to allow hospitals to add surge capacity. And state officials say they're preparing for the very likely possibility of needing to call up the National Guard to assist. Sununu describes the Granite State in an emergency situation when it comes to their health care system. In Massachusetts, officials there are telling hospitals to once again postpone non-urgent procedures to keep a certain cushion of available hospital beds for emergencies. It's not just because of COVID, although the Bay State has seen a rise there as well. Hospital leaders say it's also because of delayed care, meaning sicker patients and longer hospital stays. Add on to that shortage of health care workers. An expansion project is underway at Maine Medical Center, and it could be getting bigger. The hospital wants to add more beds to the Malone Family Tower. The new building will provide state-of-the-art procedure rooms for cardiovascular care. The hospital is hoping to add a new sterile processing department. The modifications will add about $52 million to the overall cost for a total of more than $588 million. That new tower is expected to open in 2023. 609 right now on this Wednesday morning and this Thanksgiving expects to look a lot more normal than last year that's thanks to vaccinations and boosters. More family and friends are getting together this year and traveling for the first time in months. Ike Zidiaz is in our Washington Bureau and Ike so what should we know before we hit the road? Christina, you can expect long lines at the airport and busy roads that's typical for Thanksgiving but this year there could be some extra inconveniences. Americans are thankful for a more normal holiday this year after a long pandemic. AAA predicts more than 48 million people in the U.S. will drive out of town and more than 4 million will fly. It's going to be more like a 2019 because travel was really crushed last year. People, you know, there were no vaccines, people were very uncertain, there were a lot of restrictions. While many restrictions have been lifted, if you're traveling by air, you still have to wear a mask at the airport and on your flight, a safety requirement that's led to various clashes inside the cabin. The rate at which they are acting out is at a frequency that is way out of hand. Flight attendants say they've endured sexist, racist, and homophobic insults from passengers, the threat of violence, and in some cases, physical attacks. At best, these individuals are creating a horrible experience for everyone. At worst, they are putting the safety and security of everyone traveling at risk. If you're driving this holiday, you may feel it in your wallet. The national average for a gallon of gas is $3.40, but prices vary drastically from coast to coast. But it's still under $3 in Oklahoma, but people out on the West Coast, like California, they're paying well over $4, close to $5. We have found traditionally that no matter what gas prices are, once people have decided they're going to go on a trip, they're going to go on that trip. Oil prices have started to come down in recent days, and President Biden has just announced he's tapping into U.S. oil reserves next month to bring drivers some relief. In Washington, it's a DS to the MTW News 8. An Oxford County man will spend the rest of his life behind bars. Mark Penley getting two life sentences for killing his ex-girlfriend and her friend on New Year's night in Paris in 2019. Penley shot and killed Heather Bickford and Dana Hill in their apartment. Bickford's two children were there at the time. They were not physically hurt. This morning, officials confirming Ryan Laundry took his own life. Law enforcement spent several weeks searching for him following the disappearance of his fiance, Gabby Petito. The couple went on a cross country road trip. Before Petito disappeared, her body was later discovered and Laundry was considered a person of interest. He was never formally charged with her death. His remains were found in Florida last month. 612 right now, coming up on this Wednesday morning. Your dollar won't be going as far at the dollar store in, new, in the new year. Dollar Tree next chain to hike prices due to inflation. And it's the first time the company has increased its prices in 30 years.
Washington we kick off one of the busiest travel days of the year. That also means one of the busiest days for scammers to make their attacks. New Boston reports has tips this morning on how to protect yourself from scams as you head home for the holidays. And in speaking of travel, heading home, of course we are keeping an eye on the forecast this morning. Uh, one of the busiest travel days of the year. We've also got a look here from 295 to yeah, 295 in Portland, uh, looking pretty easy now, pretty normal morning, but uh, we were looking at this yesterday at noon in the same view, it was quite proud of that, folks were trying to get a head start, but today, you know who you're dealing with, you're dealing with everybody. The furniture superstore, the furniture superstore, the furniture superstore, the furniture and that there's weekend blowout. That's right, get to the furniture superstore and take advantage of huge savings in all apartments, plus get door buster specials on all furniture and mattresses. The furniture superstore.
by 5.30 this afternoon. Uh, or I should say evening, that can start out, right? Uh, 43 will be our wind chill tomorrow after uh, mid-morning, but how much wind? So tomorrow's a nice little warm-up. So clear skies right now, so there are high temperatures. A low 40s to upper 30s today, that's it, but a few colder than that. Tonight's going to be a cold night, so waking up early on Thanksgiving, you're going to be dealing with temperatures like these, uh, low to mid-20s. During the afternoon, though, how about that? Thanksgiving, 50 degrees. Looking much, much better, even up in the mountains, the upper 40s. So today, across, look at that, I-95 from Maine to Florida, it's dry. Uh, the busiest travel day of the year. Look it out there. And also, all the major airports, no weather delays today. There'll be some rain tomorrow out to the Midwest. And then on Friday, this rain arrives here. Now, I will point out that if you're traveling on Friday, if you have place you're driving around Maine, go ski, uh, or, or doing any outdoor plants, it's going to be messy on Friday. Rain at the coast, there will be snow in the mountains, and it'll be a mix. I do expect to see a little bit of that snow flipping over, uh, the rain flipping the snow later on Friday night. So we have that weather Friday. Saturday looks better by the afternoon. Sunday looks good for travelers. Got to keep an eye on the system on Monday. But things generally look fantastic for Thanksgiving travel. And you don't have to have that, right? Yeah, so in New England, it's nice to see it. Yeah, it always happens. So here I don't travel. Oh. <laughs> You're the key then. Yep. Mm -hmm. Stay where you are. It doesn't leave. So let me be fine. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. Ted, thanks. Governor Janet Mills is crediting conservative budgeting after new projections find Maine's general fund will have 10% more money in it than previously expected. The nonpartisan Revenue Forecasting Committee is expected to upgrade the general fund by more than $800 million for fiscal years 2022 and 23. However, the governor does say federal pandemic relief and rising prices are expected to drive up receipts for the state. Dollar Tree is known for its $1 price tag for all products, but not anymore. The bargain chain is raising its prices for the first time in three decades. By the beginning of 2022, items will be a dollar and 25 cents. Dollar Tree says the price hike will give them more flexibility to bring back customer favorites and also introduce new items. They say the increase will also help with freight and distribution costs, as well as wage increases. Another company hiking prices, General Mills, which means your favorite bowl of cereal could cost you more in the new year. The company is raising costs on hundreds of its products in 2022. Cereals like Cheerios and Lucky Charms are included in the increase, along with items from brands like Progresso and Pillsbury. Prices are expected to go up around 20% starting in mid-January. 6.20 right now on this Wednesday morning, and as we kick off the big travel day today, an urgent alert as gamers looking to cash in on this holiday travel season. Our chief national consumer correspondent, Jeff Rawson, has the red flags you need to look out for. Jeff. Hi, welcome to Rawson in 60. The FBI is out with an urgent new scam warning today, but I have tips on how to protect yourself, and all I need is 60 seconds of your time. Let's start the clock. Travel scams are expected to skyrocket this holiday season. Since travel prices are high, scammers, the FBI says, will be offering deals that are too good to be true. They do this as you know, over email. I get a ton of them over text where you just kind of get a few words uh, and then a link. And it's a short link, so it doesn't look fake and it looks real on top, too. Just say no. Scammers will send anything to get you to click on a malicious link or to reel you in by, to pay the money. I'm going to put more tips from the FBI on my website, but just look out for this, because with the holidays coming and all the holiday travel, the scammers are out there, it's going up, and the FBI, that Ross reports, want you to stay safe, keep your money. Back to you. All right, Jen. Thanks so much. That's why is increasing its security at its stores nationwide. To protect against an increase of looting, the retailer CEO says some recent incidents have involved looters using guns, crowbars, and other weapons. As a result, now Best Buy is locking up their merchandise and hiring more security guards. The increase in burglaries is hitting the company in the pocketbook, too. Best Buy stock dropped 12% yesterday. Apple is suing an Israeli company, the NSO Group, maker of spyware that can be secretly loaded onto iPhones. Apple's accusing the company of misusing its products and services. Critics say the spyware called Pegasus has been sold to some countries who then have used it against human rights activists and journalists. Sales may be up at places like Best Buy and Dick's Sporting Goods compared to last year, but e-commerce sales have slowed down. With more shoppers back in the stores after COVID-19 restrictions were lifted, online sales at Best Buy dropped in the last quarter compared to last year, and online sales at Dick's have stayed flat. 
622 right now and turning to total tech. Apple is delaying a feature that will add your driver's license to your iPhone or Apple Watch. ABC's medical officer Abdi has the details. In today's tech fights, Apple is pushing back the release of its digital ID cards. The plan is to allow users to store their driver's license on their Apple Wallet and easily scan at airports, retailers, and venues. The feature is now expected to debut next year. It's not clear what caused the delay. Next, the new Netflix hub on Spotify. It offers fans a centralized place to find soundtracks, playlists, and podcasts for their favorite shows and movies on Netflix. The expanding offerings already include material from popular shows like Richardson, Squid Game, and The Crown. And Microsoft is celebrating the 20th anniversary of Xbox with an interactive museum. The virtual world allows you to roam through the console's history. It also goes through some of the product's low points, such as Microsoft's ill-fated attempt to acquire Nintendo 21 years ago. It's all history. Those are your tech breaks. Have a great day. It's going to be warm on Thanksgiving, like cooling down for the weekend. 
And as we're into December, solidly there, it stays pretty cool. And as we have the fair total storm tracker clear for today and tomorrow, then there's that chance for rain and snow Friday afternoon, Friday night. And then looking good for the weekend. I think I'm going to keep an eye on what's going on Monday there. That could get a little tricky, too. Maybe some of the snow and a pink mix. Yeah. Stay tuned. That, that, that. Okay, Deb, thank you. 627 right now on this Wednesday morning. And this week, we've been getting lots of tips on celebrating the holiday season and the best ways to enjoy your Thanksgiving meal. Here we do have some more advice this morning on what not to do when preparing your turkey tomorrow. Take a look. <laughs> That is a hot burn, and it happens so quickly. Seconds. The fire department in Fresno, California, did an experiment here to just show people what not to do when they're frying a frozen turkey. They made all the most common mistakes you hear of at once, like filling the pot up with too much oil, turning the heat up too high, and not letting the burn thaw. That was the result. Yeah, really scary right there. The fire department said Thanksgiving is one of the busiest days for fires in the country. And they sent out a warning that people should really wear protective clothing and shoes while frying their birds and to do the frying in an open space away from other people, children, homes, any type of kind of shelters or garages. And good advice there. They also say have a thermometer and a fire extinguisher and hopefully you don't have to use that. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course be careful in the kitchen too because things mm -hmm. can happen there as well. So yeah. be safe and really fast. Yes. Have that fire extinguisher nearby. Yeah. 628 right now we're back in two minutes.
we can just have a lot of folks are waiting on people to get to have the animal. Right. And then right. they just get excited, right? They'll yeah. extra time to clean or hang out before the company gets it. It's when cleaning. It's when cleaning. Last minute. Everybody, our 12-hour forecast is looking mighty cold this morning. 28 degrees, northwest winds at 14. At 10 a.m., 35 degrees, 40 at 1. And as uh, most of people are probably getting out of work, hitting the road as early as you can, 36 degrees. Clear skies still going to be quite blustery out there. Right now, Portland, current temperature coming in at 28. Winds are gusting from the northwest at 24 miles an hour. That means it feels like 16 outside right now. Definitely cold. That's 23 in Waterbelt, 26 in Rockland, 13 is the cold spot in Freiburg at 28 in Portland. Winds are sustained under the northwest at 16, gusting to 24. So it feels like 16 in Portland. Look at Greenville up in Nick Bruce at 9. Oof, cold up there. And uh, you can see clear skies across our uh, state and uh, New Hampshire. Much of the cold northeast and east coast, midwest. Looking good for the busy traveling next to most of the country. It's a pretty rare day to see that happen. All right. Got to take a look at traffic. If there's an important day for traffic, it's today, right? Uh, outside of Kenny Buck, I like what we see here. But you see a good steady uh, stream of traffic coming in today. And I don't blame them, right? Here's a look. Right now in our traffic map, everything green. That's not going to stay that way. You know that. As we uh, zoom into the greater Portland area, all green for your morning commute. Uh, no issues there up in Lewis and Auburn. And no uh, worries this morning about travel. Just going to warm that car up, right? Uh, and Augusta looking pretty good early this morning. Your drive times are all in check early this morning. Okay, that looks good. Well, we can stay that way all day. Okay, Ted, thank you so much. 6.34 right now on this Wednesday morning. CMP's permit to build a power corner through Western Maine suspended by the state. WMTW News 8's Adriana Sanchez is here to explain this decision and now the reaction. Good morning, Adriana. Good morning. Well, after the public hearing on Monday, it took the commissioner less than 24 hours to issue her decision to suspend the permit for CNP's 145-mile corridor effective immediately. She called the referendum earlier this month a change in the situation that requires suspension. They do have 30 days to complete some cleanup work, like spreading out wood chips, covering unfinished foundation, and stabilizing off-corridor access ro roads. Of course, CNP already stopped work last week. Now the DEP does say the license will be reinstated if the courts rule in favor of the CMP. Project CEO Thorne Dickinson tells us they are disappointed with the decision, adding that there is a real and serious need for this project to address climate change. He says the Maine DEP itself concluded that climate change was the single biggest threat to Maine's environment. Now the fight over the corridor is not over, and ECEC still has a hearing next month in the Maine Business Court where it will argue that the referendum itself is unconstitutional. Coming up, we'll have a reaction from corridor opponents. Live in the newsroom, Adriana Sanchez, WMTW News 8. Adriana, thank you. The main CDC is reporting nearly 1,100 additional cases of COVID-19. That covers Saturday through yesterday. 28 more people have died from the virus. 298 people are now in the hospital. That's the most so far for our state. 96 are in the ICU. It's also a record. Just under 68% of the state's total population is now fully vaccinated. And nearly a quarter of all kids ages 5 to 11 years old have their first dose. It's not just here in Maine. Much of New England seeing the worst surge since the pandemic began. And New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu has signed an executive order to allow hospitals to add surge capacity. And state officials say they are preparing for the very likely possibility of needing to call up the National Guard to assist. Sununu describes the granite state in an emergency situation when it comes to their health care system. In Massachusetts, officials telling hospitals to once again postpone non-urgent procedures to keep a certain cushion of available hospital beds for emergencies. It's not just because of COVID, although the Bay State has seen a rise there too. Hospital leaders say it's also because of delayed care, meaning sicker patients and longer hospital stays. Add on to that, a shortage of healthcare workers. Millions are already hitting the road today ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday. Airports are expected to see the largest surge in travelers since the start of the pandemic. That's this week. But troubles at airports and a rise in COVID-19 cases are raising some concerns this morning. ABC's Emily Lynn is in Washington with more. Good morning. Now, the holiday travel rush is underway, but the big question is, are airlines and airports ready? This morning, an early glimpse of the frustration some Americans will face when they enjoy the Thanksgiving travel rush. Like these long lines of cars outside the airport in Phoenix last night. 
The GSA expects the number of travelers will reach pre-pandemic highs this week. More than 2 million people are expected to fly today alone. Airlines are preparing for most planes to be at full capacity as the federal mask mandate fills an increase in mid-air altercations. We're seeing unruly behavior on a lot. So we want to make sure that we're working um, and communicating effectively, but also understanding that there's mandates. And now new concern about the holiday feeling a surge in COVID cases. New infections are up 42% nationwide in the last month. Now back to the airports. Here's another worry for some travelers. Police in Portland, Oregon are now warning about thieves stealing catalytic converters from parked cars at the airport. They say the thieves are reselling the metal inside. And when ABC News, Washington. Well, on a week where most of us will celebrate with a big Thanksgiving dinner, Meals on Wheels is asking for your help. Seniors Plus in Lewiston needs drivers for its Lisbon delivery group. New drivers will receive orientation training, and Seniors Plus reimburses vehicle expenses. Organizers say it's an important program because it's more than a meal. The delivery is a wellness check and a chance for people who are homebound to socialize. The route takes about two hours, four days a week. Proof of vaccination is required. If you're interested, reach out to Seniors Plus in Lewiston. Coming up, a shelter in Alfred is making sure that people can enjoy a Thanksgiving meal as much as possible. Their story will be coming back in just a minute. And on this uh, day before Thanksgiving, many people looking to travel. Uh, but let's just enjoy the sunrise for a minute because the colors are beautiful. The colors are absolutely stunning out there for our busy day of travel or getting ready for Thanksgiving Day tomorrow from cold up in Closed captioning of WMDW brought to you by the Furniture Superstore, Maine's largest family-owned and operated furniture and mattress superstore. Thanksgiving Eve, we were talking about earlier. Uh, what do you eat for Thanksgiving Eve? Anything that you don't have to, uh, that you can take out. 
She's looking down at us and, and proud of us that um, all these people are getting food on Thanksgiving. The food pantry in Alfred will continue to hand meals out to anyone who needs one. They're open today from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. Right now it is 643 as we're about to take a live tour. Right here at the Portland Water Truck, and it is beautiful. Um, but it's very cold out there. <laughs> so if you're at the park, maybe start the car a little bit early, warm it up for you. Yeah, get ready for it. We're back in two minutes with your coverage to go. Ladies, Amanda, 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 Catching a bird wherever you're going, catching a bird. 
in Virginia has awarded more than $25 million to the victims of violence stemming from the 2017 Charlottesville Unite the Right rally. A group of prominent white supremacist leaders also found liable on four counts relating to racially motivated violence. During a counter-protest at the two-day rally, one woman was killed and dozens more were injured when a white national demonstrator drove his car into the crowd. Today, jury deliberations will continue in the trial of the killing of Ahmaud Arbery. Three Georgia men face nine charges, including murder, aggravated assault, and false imprisonment. If convicted, Gregory McMichael, his son Travis McMichael, and their neighbor, William Ron Bryant, could face life in prison. There are 11 white people and one black person on the jury. The judge spent nearly an hour giving them specific instructions on how to reach a verdict. Turning on to 652, President Biden announcing 50 million barrels of oil are being taken out of the National Reserve in an effort to help bring down gas prices. The White House saying a major reason for surging fuel costs is oil producers have not increased supply quick enough. Some economists are skeptical that these reserve barrels will be enough to meet demand or noticeably impact prices. This morning, makers are paying an average of 345 at the pump. NASA launched a new spacecraft early this morning, and it is on a collision course on purpose. The DART mission is headed to an asteroid where the spacecraft will crash into the rock to see if it can change the asteroid's course. Moments ago, NASA tweeted that the solar arrays on the spacecraft have successfully unfurled. That's the last milestone in a very successful launch. Hunters have killed more than 31,000 deer in Maine this year, but if you got your deer in the Fairfield area, do not eat it. State wildlife officials say several deer killed near some contaminated farm fields have tested positive for high levels of PFAS. Those are known as forever chemicals. Even deer killed a couple miles away at elevated levels. So this includes parts of Skowhegan, Norwich Walk, Smithfield, Oakland, and Waterville. Over time, these chemicals can increase your risk of getting certain cancers. This may be hard for some diehard seafood lovers to hear this, but you may have to rethink how you cook your lobster or if you eat it at all. Researchers in the UK, they found that crustaceans are actually sentient beings. They're able to not just feel pain, but to learn and can consciously avoid situations that may be dangerous. A committee still has to officially agree to put them on the list of sentient animals, but that would mean they're protected by law in the UK. Have to see what happens next. All right, 654, right now switching gears, looking at traffic, because Ted's been saying all morning long. Today is the big travel day. Yeah, today is the big travel day, and we're looking at dirt drive times. All good early this morning, uh, 19 minutes long to Portland. Hollis to Portland, 27 minutes in Auburn to Portland. Looking pretty good now. <laughs> if you are in the Augusta region, things look good too. Augusta is in good shape too. We're looking at green, meaning good to go across the area. Here's a look right now in the greater Portland area. We do have a little bit of a slowdown happening. Uh, that would be, uh, I believe, 22 on Congress Street there, where the, wind, uh, the speed is about 20 miles, uh, 20 miles an hour. That's not that bad. Uh, the greater uh, uh, Portland view across Maine, that looks good. And one thing you'll notice is. Uh, you got that uh, definitely the clear view uh, up and down the turnpike, and that's what we want to see uh, this time of the day, uh, and hopefully maybe later on today as well. All right, outside in Kenny, look a straight, uh, steady stream of cars out there, but nothing too big uh, to really worry about across the area. That looks pretty good. Let's take a look at our weather right now. It is cold, 26 degrees. Uh, it is 18 right now in Rangeley. Now there are some winds across the area. Uh, there are. Look at winds up about 14 miles an hour from the west, uh, west northwest in Portland, gusting up to 15 in ranges. So the gusts are not terrible now, but it does feel cold here. Going into the 7 a.m. hour, it feels like 14 in Portland, 16 in Auburn, 14 in Freiburg, and it feels like 9 up in Greenville. So you're going to feel that today, even in the afternoon, feel like it's in the 20s with that wind chill. Satellite radar nice and clear for us. Highs today in the mid. Upper 30s, so low 40s, and then along the coastline tonight will be a cold night. Waking up on Thanksgiving morning, it will be super cold. And then for Thanksgiving Day, how about that? During the afternoon, 50 degrees, looking real good. On the eight day forecast, turkey time has arrived, guys. 50 degrees. It will be impact weather on Friday, especially the afternoon and evening, where there will be snow in our mountains and northern areas. I mean, could flip still even at the coastline late Friday night, but I think rain primarily the weekend looking good. Okay, but as you're saying, safer travel, weather not be a problem, so could be anywhere, so that's great. Oh, yeah, across the country looking good. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Mm -hmm. You're right here. This is my guest this morning. Good to see you throughout the morning, America. Happy Thanksgiving. Wherever you are.
absolutely takes you this year. Get away with our best deals of the season. I did some early shopping this year. One for you, one for me. <sighs> I love it. I got us little something too. Yeah. yeah. One for you and one for me. I love it. Thanksgiving. Plus, he's back. 
It's the inspiring announcer fighting cancer. <laughs> the vital emotional court side return with a message that will have you saying, Awesome, baby. Thank you. 
fuse the bridges and tunnels between New York and New Jersey this weekend. This would be just below pre-pandemic levels. In fact, traffic at these bridges and tunnels has been running at more than 97% of the volume it was in 2019. Area rail traffic is not quite at that level. So what that tells you is that people prefer to use their cars for the holiday. What that means is traffic on these roadways at near normal levels with the peak starting in the middle of this afternoon. Back to you, Whit. All right, John, we're seeing the traffic already from above there. Thank you. Of course, the weather is a major factor in holiday planning, so let's turn to Ginger with the Thanksgiving forecast. Ginger, good morning. Wit in a week that is all about gratitude, I think we all take a moment and thank Mother Nature for not being a beast this holiday. It's one of the first I can remember in covering 10 Thanksgivings across the nation here at ABC. Of course, we'll find some spots and some trouble spots to show you, but hey, a little bit of snow in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and then in western New York where those lake effect snow bands have been covered in the roads and people's decks, but really getting folks more in the holiday spirit than being problematic. The only thing you may notice when you get out the door, it's, it's cold. I mean, Tallahassee, air temperature 28 this morning. The wind chills cold, just as cold in Atlanta as it is in Chicago. So, yes, it's chilly. But, man, you could not find a better coast-to-coast -coast drive or fly map than that one. Wait, I'll have more on the extended forecast coming up. We will take that good news, Ginger. Thank you so much. And we'll have much more on how you can plan for the holiday coming up in just a bit. All right, we're going to turn now to the verdict watch and the trial of three men charged with the murder of Ahmaud Arbery. The jury getting back to work this morning after deliberating for about six hours on Tuesday. Steve Osasami is at the courthouse in Brunswick, Georgia, tracking the latest. Good morning, Steve. Good morning to you, Michael. At one point last night, it looked like the jury wanted to continue working a little later into the night, but they decided instead to continue their deliberations this morning. We know this morning that there's one black member of the jury, and we also know that the jury four person is one of the younger black women in the group. And this jury will decide the fate of the three men accused of murder in a case where race matters just so much. The peaceful, the regular demonstrations outside the courthouse have led to tighter security. And it's why the judge moved jurors to a quiet room that doesn't have exterior windows. They will decide if Travis McMichael, his father Gregory, and their neighbor William Roddy Bryant are found guilty or acquitted on nine charges, including murder, aggravated assault, and false imprisonment. The three have pleaded not guilty. That's man who actually pulled the trigger under the law. They're all guilty. Even if it was murder. The law in Georgia allows for someone who was an accomplice to murder to be punished just as severely as someone who committed the homicide. If you can prove that the actions of both people led to the killing, and the minimum sentence for a murder conviction here is life in prison, it's why William Roddy Bryant was also charged with murder. He's the one who recorded the disturbing cell phone video showing the moment when Travis McMichael is seen shooting and killing 25-year-old Ahmaud Arbery in February of last year. While he didn't have a gun, prosecutors say that Brian helped chase the young black man using his pickup truck before the deadly shooting. Mr. Brian played a substantial and necessary part in causing his death. He is responsible for the murder of Margaret. In her final closing arguments before deliberations, the prosecutor also called the defendant who fired the fatal shots, who testified, a liar. Do you think this Travis McMichael who took the stand was the same Travis McMichael from February 23rd? You think they're the same person? Or you think this is trial preparation? McMichael told jurors that it was the unarmed victim who attacked him, saying that he was acting in self-defense. If he would have gotten the shotgun from him, then it was a uh, supply for death situation. All three of them in charge say that the shooting was justified under then-citizen's arrest law, but at a neighborhood construction site where Arbery kept appearing and raising suspicions, police say he has never seen taking anything or committing any felony as was required in the old law. If the jury fails to reach a unanimous verdict today, the court is planning to be closed tomorrow, and they're expected to begin deliberations again if that happens on Friday. Cecilia. Okay, Steve, thank you so much. We're going to turn out to new developments in that Christmas prep parade tragedy in Wisconsin. The suspect making his first appearance in court as the news broke that another victim, an eight-year-old boy, had died, bringing the death toll to six. Alex Perez is in Waukesha with the latest on this. Good morning, Alex. Hey, good morning, Cecilia. We are learning more about that youngest victim. He was desperately fighting for his life. He was with his brother enjoying the parade when the chaos began.
this morning new details on the suspect accused of plowing his SUV through crowds at a Christmas parade in Daryl Brooks, shackled in court Tuesday as we learned a sixth victim, a child, had died. I wish to notify the court sadly that we learned of another death of a child. The youngest victim, eight-year-old Jackson Sparks, according to a statement from his parents released by the family's church, he and his older brother Tucker, seen at a family GoFundMe page, were both critically injured in the attack, but the family says Tucker, by the grace of God, is miraculously recovering from his injuries. Police say the suspect had mowed down and killed five others and injured 62. In a criminal complaint, authorities calling Brooks' actions an intentional act to strike and hurt as many people as possible. And that when an officer observed Brooks, he was looking straight ahead directly at him, and it appeared he had no emotion on his face. Three of those killed members of the Dancing Grannies group, all friends of Sherry Millard, who was marching alongside them. It was a total shock. I think when it first happened, it was like disbelief. And then it was just like instant, what can I do? These doorbell camera images of Brooks show him after the incident knocking on a door. Police then arriving, arresting him. He's due back in court in January. Wet time out to President of Sad Developments this morning. Thank you. Now that breaking news overnight, the NASA mission that sounds something like out of a sci-fi movie, a rocket on its way to crash into an asteroid and try to actually knock it off course. Katie Hartung is tracking the latest on this trial run, and that's the key. It's a trial run in preparation for a potential threat down the road. Kaylee, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Wait, this is a test. I repeat, this is just a test. It's NASA's first ever planetary defense mission, and the goal of this crash is to knock this massive asteroid off its path, which scientists say could prevent a truly catastrophic natural disaster one day in the case an asteroid threatens this planet. So overnight, NASA launching the DART mission, that's short for Double Asteroid Redirection Test. This SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket took off from Vandenberg Space Force Base here in Southern California, and in about 10 months, a spacecraft the size of a vending machine will crash right into an asteroid about 7 million miles away from Earth at a speed of 15,000 miles an hour. Now, this mission, it amounts to target practice, and the asteroid they're targeting, it's a rock the size of a stadium, 525 feet across. It's called Dimorphous, and it is not on a collision course with Earth. But after it takes this direct hit, NASA will be tracking it to see if it's not ever so slightly off its course. And if this works, time to say this technology could save the world one day, guys. Ooh. Kevin, we appreciate that. You reminded us it's only a test. <laughs> <laughs> Fascinating. Okay, so we have some more space news. I'm not sure if you've heard about this headline that's just coming in. But the reaction has been pouring into Michael's big announcement that unless in three weeks, but who's counting? He's going to be lifting off in the next Blue Origin Space Launch. Mark your calendars, everybody. December 9th, that is the day. Yeah, so many people have been reaching out. I got your reaction. <laughs> <laughs> so many people have been reaching out. They've been really, they've been really excited for me. One of them is she the details. He's here with us right now, and he's going to tell us what it takes to go to space. Good morning, Gene. Oh, Listen, we are so, look, we got the countdown right there. Just to make it Listen, for the next week and a half, they're really going to soak in all the love, but the training really gets going the week of the launch. Let's go ahead and look at the timeline now, because you're going to arrive in the West Texas desert Sunday, December 5th. Your training is going to begin that Monday, and you're going to begin that special safety training. It's essentially like getting on a plane for the very first time, right? You're thinking about uh, finding the oxygen mask using that safety belt. You, you use the safety belt. You you, you try. <laughs> And then you're going to continue that training into Tuesday. You're going to go through a sort of launch simulation. And this is where you're going to be in your seat, and you're going to actually be in this replica. We showed you that yesterday. You're going to hear the roar of the rocket. You're going to really feel that vibration. It will be very, very powerful. Not quite what it's actually going to feel like when you actually lift off. That's going to feel like something. Like when you say, you kind of scared me. <laughs> And Wednesday, you're going to finish off uh, that training. And then on Thursday morning, December 9th, boom, you are going up and you are lifting off. Now, lots of
they won't, they are sending you lots of messages of love and support. I found one really interesting and quite funny. Let's put that up on the screen right now. There is Heidi Bloom. She's commenting on that Instagram post about going to space. Are you really?
Security 
immediate energy savings with quality windows and doors from Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Big trucks leave the road. They're dangerous and they can cause big, bad injuries. But the big truck companies don't stand a chance against me. I'm Jim with our reasons. If you can hurt my big truck, call the twos. We win for you. You can trust you're getting high quality milk in every delicious drop. We select farms that pledge never to use artificial milk and protect your milk with our light bulb bottle. Hood never stops caring about our milk because you never stop caring about your family. This morning at 9 on Channel 8. The Black Friday sale at FX Starcon saves you even more. Find the dining room to fit your life and budget, and you can have it all over for the holidays. Save all month during the Black Friday sale at FX Starcon. Live comfortably with quality you can afford. Hear the magic of Holiday Central on Discovery Plus. Your home for everything holiday. Just a great, I mean, 
incredibly emotional. You can see all the support from the fans and stuff as well. It's great to see you back. Yeah. We, of course, have a lot more ahead this morning, including the CEO of Kroger joining us with the lowdown on food shopping today. And we're on the Black Friday countdown as well. Becky Worley with us all morning with top deals and how to get them. That's all coming up later on. All right, with now to that revelation in the Gabby Petito case about Brian Laundry, the only person of interest in her killing, Victor Kendall in Miami, Florida, with the latest work this morning. Good morning, Victor. Good morning, Michael. Determining Brian Laundry's cause of death took time. It has now been more than a month since his remains were discovered. There was an autopsy and a forensic anthropologist was brought in. Now we know it was suicide. This morning, the cause of death for Brian Laundry revealed a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The attorney for the Laundry family telling ABC News Chris and Roberta Laundry were informed that the cause of death was a gunshot wound to the head and the manner of death was suicide. <laughs> Laundry was the subject of a weeks-long manhunt following the murder of his girlfriend, Gabby Petito, during a cross-country road trip the couple took together. Laundry's remains were found in a Florida nature reserve in late October and were identified by dental records. Investigators found what appear to be human remains, along with personal items such as a backpack and notebook belonging to Brian Laundry. The contents of the backpack and notebook have not yet been revealed. Laundry still named as a person of interest in the FBI's investigation into Petito's death. The FBI not indicating whether or not that will change. Gabby Petito's family opening up about the loss of their daughter last week on the Dr. Oz show. I cry every night. I stare at pictures. And that's hard, but I feel like I need to stare at them and hopefully um, just the memories. Um, just, it's difficult. It's really difficult. The Petito family not issuing a further statement on Laundra's cause of death, saying they were asked to wait for the United States Attorney's Office to make a determination on whether any additional individuals will be charged. And the Laundry family attorney adds that Brian's parents are hopeful that these findings bring some sense of closure to both families. With All right, Victor, thank you. We're going to shift gears now and turn to the supply chain issues across the country with Thanksgiving less than 24 hours away. We are joined now by Kroger CEO Rodney McMullen with us from a store in Newport, Kentucky, breaking down where things are and whether relief is in sight with all of these uh, backlogs and slowdowns. Rodney, good morning. It's good to have you. So Thanksgiving, just a day away here. What products are you seeing people buy this week? And are there any last-minute shortages on items that people need to be aware of? If you look at the things people are buying, it's the traditional things, turkeys, fresh turkeys, ham, uh, cranberries, all the uh, celebrations to go along with it. The one thing that's kind of unique uh, is people are buying things for their pets. And if you look at turkey flavored uh, pet products are also uh, growing really fast. Uh, so we've seen reports of shortages, of course, oh, we're still in great shape. From, we're still in great shape on products. We have plenty of turkeys, plenty of hams, and uh, people may have to substitute if you want fresh cranberries to uh, cranberries that can and things like that, but uh, plenty of substitutions available. So you said that you're in great shape, but we have seen these reports across the country that shoppers uh, might not be able to find things like pies or the exact size bird that they're looking for. We're also learning that some chains to eat even limiting purchases on, as you know, their cranberry sauce and jars of gravy. Are you seeing any of that in your stores, though? We, we were just asking people to buy what they need. So, so far, we have not put any limits in place. Uh, our supply chain team really did a fabulous job of getting extra facilities, extra product in advance. Uh, so it's really paying off right now for our customers. So what can customers do today if they can't find a product they're looking for? Well, we feel very confident that you'll be able to find something, uh, so you may end up having to get a different size turkey. Obviously, if you're just now waiting to get a turkey, you'll probably want to get a fresh turkey as opposed to frozen, because it'll take a little while for it to thaw out. But uh, there's still plenty of substitution available uh, as well, so you may need asparagus versus Brussels sprouts, some of those things, but uh, plenty of opportunities. So I need a little bit of flexibility there. So, so what are your stores actually doing to deal with some of the supply shortages, some of these price hikes, to try to keep prices where people are comfortable with that? Yeah, we've really been working with our suppliers to try to push off uh, cost increases as long as we can. If you look at turkeys, uh, we actually uh, bought turkeys earlier in the spring before.
before some of the cost increases went through. So we're able to pass some of those benefits on to the customer along with standard promotions and stuff. But we're really working uh, with all our suppliers to really try to minimize the effect on customers. Uh, and also we have our own brand products where customers are able to substitute and save a little bit of money and it's the same great quality. So for some tips for people to do some smart shopping out there, are there do's and don'ts that you would recommend as they head into the stores? Well, stick to your list. Uh, you know, always, uh, I think that's a, a great thing to do. Uh, when you look at uh, organic, fresh products are uh, still really strong and people are able to uh, eat healthy. Uh, and, you know, when you look at, when you think about Thanksgiving meal for 10 people, you can easily get it for less than uh, $50. So it's less than $5 a person. So it's an incredibly high quality meal uh, and you're with family and friends. So it's just a great celebration of that too. All right, stick to the list. That's key. Once you start going off, you can start having issues. Rodney, thank you so much. We appreciate your time this morning. Cecilia, over to you. All right, Wick, coming up, everybody, the one and only Becky Curley. She's getting us ready for Black Friday with some strategic savings. We'll just the command center there. Don't miss some of the deals on some great gifts. Stay with us.
surprises. But wherever you are in your journey, your Dell Technologies Advisor is here for you with the right tech solutions so you can stop at nothing for your customers. The American Heart Association searches on for 2022's Go Red Blue and Ambassadors. Survivors of heart disease and stroke apply at heart.org slash main by December 31st. Proudly sponsored by Channel 8 and Main CW. One of the best of all trees is back. The premier holiday event celebration for Scott. Two folks of 54 decorated trees. Get your tickets at coachbriners.org slash festival. Proudly sponsored by Channel 8 and Main CW.
healing potion to soften his suckers up. I love it. Thanks. Okay. Hot treat for dinner and readably comfy new lab cream. Dragons. Both readily match or similar. Until always discreet invented a pad that protects different with two rapid drawing layers. For strong protection, that's always discreet. Question is protection. Try always discreet.
come January 1st, there may be fewer firefighters to respond to calls in Greenfield because they do not want to get the COVID-19 vaccine. The fire chief saying right now he has 34 volunteer firefighters on his roster. Nine have decided not to participate in the vaccine mandate, so they will not be allowed to go out on calls. The town manager says they cannot force volunteers to get the shot, but adds a mutual aid agreement with other towns means response times should not suffer. That's it for this total coverage update. I'm Christina Frank. Right, I'm Kathleen Jordan. We're back here at 827 with more local news and check your forecasts as we leave here with a live look from Las Baldwin. Thank you. 
there and people on a regular basis to be part of this and be able to share their experience. So we're really excited that you get to do this uh, from the safety of our own school chairs here, of course. But it's great. I'm looking forward to it. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm sure I will. Fly me to the moon. And now we're going to turn into the We are tracking the very latest on the big Thanksgiving rush. Our team is covering all the travel angles this morning. First, let's go back, Trevor, all at LaGuardia Airport here in New York. Good morning again, Trevor. Good morning again, Michael. Yeah, just in the last hour, we really watched this place start to fill up here at LaGuardia. A lot more people as part of this Thanksgiving travel rush. And credit where it is due to the employees here. Well, the lines are getting longer. They are still under control. We know TSA has been preparing for what's expected to be pre-pandemic levels of travel. And there have been some lengthy lines at a bunch of different airports all across the country. These crowds are going to be putting the system to the test. Because remember, we are just weeks removed from Southwest and American Airlines abruptly canceling thousands of flights. So both the TSA and the airlines say they both up their staffing. They insist they are ready for the rush. And that United CEO says... The eight busiest travel days since the pandemic began are all happening between November 19th and the 30th. We are in the thick of it right now. Now, this actually might not be too much of a surge, though, because TSA says they have screened more than 2 million people every day for the past six days. That's so far gone off without a hitch. We are hoping for the same thing over the next week. If you are part of those crowds flying this week, experts say you should leave a little bit of extra time to get through security. If you can swing it, the early morning flights are going to be easier, both with security and also those flights are going to be less likely to be canceled too. So that's a good idea. But remember, as busy as it's going to be today, the busiest ones are going to be the flights home Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's just a good idea to plan on some extra time, Michael. All right, this weekend, get there early. Give yourself some time. Trevor, thank you so much, my friend. Cecilia? All right, we're not done yet because millions more are hitting the roads, and drivers are, of course, dealing with these highest gas prices since 2014. So let's go back to Ariel Rushing with more on this. Good morning again, Ariel. Good morning to you, Cecilia. This price cut can't come soon enough for the 48 million people that are set to hit the roads this holiday season. According to AAA, many are on the roads already. Some paying as much as $3.40 a gallon to fill up. That's the national average. But some out in California spending as much as $4.70 to fill up. The good news is that President Biden's decision to tap into the strategic oil reserve could cut the price of gas by 15 cents. But the bad news is, of course, this is not going to happen happen overnight, the administration acknowledging that this could take a couple of weeks to take hold. If you are one of those people heading out on the roads today, the best advice is to do so after 9 p.m. The worst time to travel today is between noon and 8 p.m. If you're heading out on Thanksgiving, try to do it before 11 a.m. And if you're making the great escape on Saturday or Sunday, do it before noon. Guys, we're taking notes in here. Ariel, thanks. Cecilia, now let's go back to Ginger, who's tracking the latest forecast. And Ginger, possibly some, some good news, at least in the big picture, right? It really is. Aside from the sub-zero wind chill that we're standing in here and you're feeling all the way to Atlanta, we really have a quiet map for this busiest holiday travel day. And I cannot tell you, the years past I've covered, there's always some sort of wind for the Macy's or something going on in the northern plains like a blizzard. Not this time. But we do have some lake effect snow, and you will see that in the lee of some of the lakes. Check that out. Uh, Western New York covering the decks, some of the roads, but aside from those, it's just about the cold this morning. Pittsburgh feels like 24. Philadelphia's feeling like they're right around freezing. So, also have to just quickly show you that map. And there's the one that we say we are grateful for today. A couple of things coming through on Thursday itself. Houston could have its wettest Thanksgiving on record, but hey, some rain? We can do this. Michael? Alright, thank you so much, Ginger. Coming up, the story behind one couple's emotional surrogacy battle. And what they want other families to know about their journey. And Becky, really, she's not done yet. She's getting ready to stay up late. She's got some door busters you're going to want to be on the lookout for. Also ahead, if you want the perfect turkey chef, George Duran is here to help out. And Jessica Seinfeld is here with how to get your sides just right. We'll be right back with more GMA. Stay with us. Thank you. 
though we are still not listed on the birth certificate as their parents. Tammy and Jordan Myers telling People Magazine that they had their babies Ames and Ellison via surrogate last January, but laws surrounding surrogacy in their home state require families to legally adopt their own biological children. We had a meeting with um, an adoption agency to start the process, and she looked at me point blank and said, well, you are not the mother. We have to go through background checks and home inspections and um, a lot of rigorous things. With the babies home with them, the Myers say their surrogate Lauren has been by their side, even as their emotional battle drags on in court. <laughs> For Tammy and Jordan, the dream of growing their family came to a devastating halt in 2015 when the couple, parents to older daughter Corinne, found out Tammy had breast cancer. With my cancer, it was highly hormone positive, so carrying a second baby would likely bring my cancer back. Tammy froze her eggs, and the couple eventually had their biological babies via surrogate they met through a family friend. And though their attorney informed them they may be forced by Michigan law to adopt their own babies, they never imagined the uphill battle to come. They just immediately ruled on it that, um, that I was not going to be looked at as the father and that we were going to have to be forced to go through um, a full adoption of the babies. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge hit. With no county court willing to issue parental rights, the Myers options became limited. We knew that Worst case scenario, they might have to do a full adoption, but we really didn't think we would get to that point. Now, as Little Haynes and Ellison turn one, the Myers are hoping to put the paperwork behind them and finally move forward as a family. I don't really have any regrets. Um, I think if, if we had known that it would be this big of an uphill battle, um, we may not have done it, and that's something I, I, I don't even want to consider. <laughs> no regrets there, and of course, two precious babies to show for it. The Myers say that if you are contemplating surrogacy, you should consult with an attorney who can go through the paperwork with you, and that you should be prepared for any scenario. Michael? We see that, Ariel. Thank you so much for bringing that to us. Open a lot of eyes to that. Be sure to visit people.com for more on this story. Cecilia? All right, Michael, you're going to be jealous right now because I'm wearing slippers because we are turning to the best Black Friday savings ever. The one and only Becky Worley. She is back, and we are counting down in bed because we are talking about deals that are going to be worth staying up all night for. All night. I got to see those slippers. Hold those up, sir. I got mine. You got your card. We are just set. We are set. I got the coffee. Here's the so deal. what are you starting with? Here's the deal. So Thanksgiving is historically the day where the most deals go on, right? So when those websites turn over the prices is usually midnight, 11 o'clock, 3 a.m. So that's why you might want to put the coffee on, stay up. So let me give you an example of a deal. So over at Ancestry.com, they've got their Ancestry DNA, and it's at $49. That's $50 off, and it goes live tonight at midnight. So you can find your family origin, maybe find people you didn't even know you're related to online. I don't know if it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's a good gift for some, the, the person who has everything. Right, and what can gift. I want to give you another one. At Kohl's, they have board games, 50% off. They've got examples like Catan and uh, uh, Ticket to Ride and all these fun ones that you can play. 50% off. That's happening tonight. So the, the thing about all this, though, is you don't know when these actually drop. So what do we do? Do we start a watch list? Right. So you can start looking now. So for example, Home Depot advertised that they were going to have the Roomba 694, one of the highest rated Roombas. It's a great way to get your um, housekeeping done while you're lying in bed. Perfect. That was going to go live tonight for $179, saving 70 It already went live and that triggered a bunch of other stores to drop their prices. It could go even lower. Another example, at Costco, they have their Nutribullet. It's $69. That's $30 off and that it's going to go live sometime tonight. We don't know exactly what. I love you. All I see are the eyes. I'm asking right now. I need to point that out. I'm <laughs> Timing is everything. We mentioned deals that have already gone live. Are there more that we need to be on the lookout for? So, over at Walmart, they have the Apple Watch 3. It's on sale for $109, and you're going to save $99. That deal, I'm not sure how long that's going to last. It could go all the way till Black Friday. It could be done tomorrow. You just never know. Okay, there's always the a toy. The toy. A wow toy. Does, is a toy going to end up on one of these lists? Yes. So at Kohl's, they have the Land Rover Ride-On toy for $149. Now this is half off, so this is not quite as luxurious. So I have to tell you, it's the only thing that would get me out of bed because we have it right here. Are going here? I'm in. I'm in. I'm, I'm in my robe. Please check okay. it away. I'm surprised with flowers. I'm really surprised with okay. the okay. get it. All right. <laughs>
Rivers, Good Morning America. Com. Wait, we got a car that's going to take you home after the show. It's waiting for you. We, we need a live camera on Broadway to catch Becky Burley as she scores through uh, Times Square. Great stuff. All right, Cecilia, thank you very much. We are turning now to opportunities for young girls when it comes to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. A new study finds children as young as six years old think girls are less interested than boys in STEM. Janae Norman joins us now with more on this stereotype and how parents can help close the gender gap. Janae, we, we both have daughters. Tell us more about this. Effort. I was just going to say, when you've got two girls at home, I've got one at home as well as my son, so I know these are things we'll pay attention to. It feels like math, biology, chemistry, women are actually earning just as many college students Degrees, but we still see big gender disparities in fields like computer science and engineering. And researchers say these stereotypes and tropes are so powerful that they're impacting what girls are actually interested in. They are still pervasive. Negative stereotypes like girls aren't interested in science. These beliefs are not only untrue, but have more of an impact than previously thought. A new study from the University of Washington and the University of Houston finds that children as young as six perceive that girls are less interested than boys in engineering and computer science. The reason why these stereotypes are important is because they influence girls' interest in these fields. Researchers surveyed 2,500 students in first through 12th grades. So are we interested in doing the search for activity today? The one that girls are much less interested in than boys are? Yes or no? No. And use lab experiments like this one to complete their findings. The more that girls believed in these stereotypes, the less interested they were themselves in computer science and engineering. And these patterns play out in the job market. While women make up nearly half of the workforce, they account for only 25% of computer scientists and 15% of engineers. With fewer women in these fields, there's a narrower perspective driving innovations. Plus, women can be missing out on opportunities that are high status and well paid. A little disheartening to know that at that young age, those ideas are already been firing on their mind. Jennifer Porter's daughter, Rebecca, now 10, took place in the study. She was one of the few girls who went against the grain. Okay, so are you interested in doing the searching activity? The one that girls are much less interested in than boys are? Yes or no? <laughs> this sports and science-loving girl showing curiosity in the activities that she was told girls wouldn't have interest in. She doesn't always just go with the flow. She's definitely got her own opinion. We can do things boys can do and we can do that. And researchers say parents can help close the gender gap by introducing girls to engineering and computer science early. What I hope is that parents and teachers won't limit the opportunities that we give to children, and then we can start sending girls the message that girls enjoy computer science and engineering. And the researchers say sense of belonging. That's what stereotypes can have such a strong impact on at a young age. So we've got to keep two things in mind, attitudes and access. So watch out for cues for gender roles that we may think of, and how we say, say things and do things, as well as the types of books and toys that kids are exposed to. So those are things that we as parents can keep in mind. It's so interesting that we hear about these stereotypes. I mean, my daughters are totally into science, and we encourage it. And yeah. My daughter's teaching the boys how to do stuff, while teaching me how to do stuff when it comes to computers. So, so my daughter's going to hang out with your friends. Exactly, that's right, that's right. There will be other influences to worry about there. But, Janae, thank you very much. We appreciate that story. Let's head on over to Ginger. Good morning once again. Good morning. Also, the movies they watch, because for me, Twister, seeing Helen Hunt, and that character, even though that wasn't in real life, made me want to be a scientist, and that's what I became. So how about that? Wow. The accuracy-wise, Twister's pretty bad, though, so don't look at it for the signs. Okay, so looking real quick at Santa Monica, I said that we've got an overall great deal for Thanksgiving travel, but in the Southwest, in California, you do have red flag warnings that are up. You do have Santa Ana winds. You've got that heat, that offshore flow compressing. See, science is fun. Compressing, heating, and then bringing gusts up to 55 miles per hour. That's the big picture. Let's get a check now a little closer to home. Good Wednesday, I'm one of meteorologists, Dan McInerney, a quite cold morning, and today will be a blustery and sunny day, 41 degrees for that busy travel day, looking good across the state and much of the country, really. Clear tonight, the winds calm down, it's still quite cold down to 22. Tomorrow, a freezing cold morning, but it's sunny for Thanksgiving Day, a warmer up to 50 degrees with sunshine. Here's a look at our eight-day forecast. We do have impact weather for Friday, especially the afternoon and evening. Mountains will get some snow, the coast will get some rain. To the final 24 hours to get our turkeys prepped and ready for the big day. And this morning, Chef George Durant is giving us his tip for how to cook 
Thank you for joining us this morning. We are down to the bar, my friend. But do we have, do we have time to grind the turkey? Oh, absolutely. You gotta do it like right this second. Like this, just drop everything and do it now because you wanna grind it for about an hour per pound of turkey. And the way to do it is very simple. Just kind of mix your uh, salts, which is about two cups of salt, you know, be two gallons of water, half a cup of sugar in there. This is like the go to base, but just pour it in there. And let's pretend that's it is your go to recipe. That's just a full basic two cups of salt with two gallons of water. Let's pretend there's more water in there. You let this boil, you add some ice, then you add your aromatics for it. And this is where you get to choose what you want. If it's onions, herbs, lemons, whatever it is, put it in the bag, let it marinate until tonight. And tonight you remove it, you put it on a baking sheet into the fridge, open air, so you get nice, crispy skin when you cook it. That's really important. So tonight you remove it from the good white right over there. And you also have an important different plan in it when it when it comes to the gravy. Yeah, if you're gonna wet brine and you want to use the drippings for gravy, that's a salty bird right now. All those drippings are gonna be super salty. Yeah. So wash the turkey before you put it in the fridge and then you cook it. So wash that so your gravy isn't too salty. Yeah, that's pretty good What about stuffing? How do you stuff the turkey? How do you do it properly? Yeah, a lot of people are worried that the turkey's done, but the stuffing has the juices that are not fully cooked. Well, one thing to do is to make sure that if you have 165 degrees in the stuffing, if it's not up to temperature and the turkey's already cooked, pull it out and put it in the microwave until it's fully cooked. Simple as that. Another way, a lot of people hate to kind of dig out the stuffing from inside the cavity. Well, use a cheesecloth, put it inside the cavity, and then pop in your stuffing. And then when you're done cooking, just pull out that cheesecloth and you're gonna have the entire stuffing pulled out. And he's over here at Fade Man. He's going, yeah, that's how you do it. He buys his from a deli. He buys that already. I need him on We gotta move on to cooking. Yeah, how do you get that perfectly crisp skin? Yeah, there's numerous ways to get that, and that's uh, drawing it in the fridge before you cook it. You can also rub some oil or butter on top of the skin, and that's really gonna make it nice and crispy. But also, you can dry brine it as well with salt. And then, one of the problems that people have is that have breast cooks before the thigh. So one thing to do is to kind of take a little bit of foil, kind of mold it before you put it in the oven, take it out. Once that breast is fully cooked, it's going to be perfectly shaped like a crown. You place it on top, let the, the thighs cook, and when you take it out of the oven, everything is cooked to perfection and crispy and delicious. Are you coming up with nice things? Yes, yeah, yeah. after this, I am after these acts. I love it. Yeah. I mean, is there a safe way if you're in a time crunch? Not a safe way, but you're in a time crunch. Yeah, how could I still get this? Yeah, if it's like last minute, oh my gosh, gosh, I forgot to put the bird in the oven. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't happen, but if it does, hey, it's called spatch popping. Have you heard of this? Yeah. You do it with a chicken, but you can do it with a turkey too. Remove the back bones, just flatten it out on a baking sheet, pop it in, and that's going to cut your cooking time in half. Mm-hmm. Guaranteed. This won't look the same for presentation, but you cook your time in half. I'm going to take it. It's still delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. You can visit goodmorningamerica.com for more last-minute tips. And thank George for his game this morning. Coming up, Hawkeye star Haley Steinfeld is live in Times Square. We'll be right back. This is GMA3, what you need to know. GMA3. The third hour of Good Morning America in the afternoon. It's all about you. Orange time. ABC. I'm not impressed. I use magic to give people the most wonderful moments of their lives. The Magic Maker, Thanksgiving night on ABC, next day on Hulu. Disney's Magical Holiday Celebration on Sunday on ABC. This is Channel and good morning, everyone. We're looking at our 12-hour forecast, and on this Thanksgiving Eve, it is definitely cold. But thank goodness we're not seeing any storms, so the travel looks smooth sailing. We have temperatures in the upper 30s, so it will feel colder than that with the wind chill. All right, currently at uh, 827, it is 27 degrees in Lewiston, 29 in Sanford, 28 here in Portland, but it feels like 17 in Portland with that wind chill. Definitely a biting one there. Here's a look at our exclusive eight-day forecast sunshine, and after a cold start, Thanksgiving warms up. It looks like some impact weather on Friday with some rain, mountain snow, and then looking better for the weekend. Here's a look at traffic. We're looking live right now with our Portland Sky Cam down at Two Keys Bridge, and things are starting to get a little crowded out there on this busiest travel day of the year. Let's take a look at our live interactive maps. Green means good, and hey, for a busy travel day, you're not going to 
see this later today, so enjoy it while you can. Yeah, good idea. Okay, Ted, thanks. CFP's permit to build its power corridor through Western Maine has been suspended. The decision coming from the commissioner of the Maine DEP. She calls a referendum earlier this month. A change in situation that requires suspension. CFP had already stopped work last week, and they have 30 additional days to complete some cleanup work. NECEC still has a hearing next month in the Maine Business Court, where they will argue that the referendum itself is unconstitutional. Mark Penley of Oxford County getting two life sentences for killing his ex-girlfriend and her friend on New Year's night in Paris in 2019. Penley shot and killed Heather Bickford and Dana Hill in their apartment. Bickford's two children were there at the time, but were not hurt. We now go back to Good Morning America. We're back here at 856. Make sure to download the WMTW app and stay connected with today's whole coverage while you're on the show. Have a great day. This morning at 9 on Channel 8. It's the Black Friday sale at Lady Rubberhand. This year, shop shoes and kits for the whole family with 20% off store wide. The sale starts November 20th and goes to November 28th, giving you a whole week of great Black Friday deals. Don't wait too long. Some of our most sought after brands are included in the sale. Come shop safely at store at your local Lady Rubberhand or shop online at www.shoes.com. Use promo code HOLIDAY20 for 20% off your order. Exclusions apply. At Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries, we know everyone has their favorite spot. It's the early Black Friday savings event. Right now only, get 0% interest until January 2025. Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries, live life comfortably. It's, it's 
really been happening sort of simultaneously to, to my acting. So um, I'm, I'm excited next year. The uh, spend a lot of time in the music space on stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah stay tuned. You definitely have been so busy. And, and I'm just curious, being involved in that Marvel universe was a little bit and with the, this role, some very physical. Yes. And was it more than you expected? You know, maybe. I don't know that I knew exactly what to expect, right? I, I, I had some, I mean, I, I, knowing this character being a highly skilled archer and swordswoman and, and martial artist, and uh, she's highly skilled in other forms of combat. I, I knew that there was, it was going to be physical, but I think taking every day as it as it would come, uh, it was maybe more than I initially thought, but I was ready. I was I was prepared. I'd been training for some time leading up to, and um, I, had, I had a great time with it. Did you say, I'm going to do a mall of stunts? Yeah. <laughs> 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 we always love seeing you. Thank you for coming in. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Get those dance moves ready. Yes. Because we are ready to send us the video. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> we're ready to watch Hawkeye premieres today Woo. on Disney Plus. Check out Haley Steinfeld. Everybody coming up. We're smashing some of Haley's for Thanksgiving with our girl, Mr. Steinfeld. We'll be right back. Do that. Okay, walk me through it. How are we going to do this? This is our traditional um, 
Mm -hmm. So mashed potato. Yeah, you don't want to kill them, crush them. And so, so you're using a uh, we're using a spatula here, basically. Yeah, you could use your hand if you're on a like bigger on TV because like I'm nervous that this one's gonna fly, fly away. Fly away. Fly away. Fly away. There you go. Okay, so now take your oven over and you wanna get it in there. Um, because once you get it in there, lots of olive oil is the, is the trick. Yeah, because then it's going to go into the oven right. and it's going to roast at 400 for about 25 minutes and get really golden brown. Mm -hmm. You want to do this on a sheet pan. Sheet pan, mm -hmm. yeah. And then you're going to flip them over right. and do the other side. Yep. And then we're going to move over here. No. Ooh, and this is yeah, this, this, this what they look like. And since my book is called Vegan at Times, mm -hmm. which is all about eating more plant-based meals, less meat, less dairy. Um, we're going to put some iron on this plate in the form of spinach. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to put yeah. it here. And then queso, which are... What's in that? I don't know, not real cheese. Queso made with raw, boiled cashews. Uh, you just throw them in the blender. You add chipotle, adobo, you, and you add salt and pepper and water and it turns into this little whip. Oh my gosh, it looks beautiful. Yeah, and you you keep them in your this in your fridge. I mean this is a side but it could also be a full meal. Yeah, right here. Definitely. I mean I would make these for Thanksgiving except what I like about this is because you've like kind of you're over your cranberry and your turkey and all of those flavors. Yeah. By Saturday, I would make these with our leftover potatoes and we start change the palate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so has it been hard getting your husband, Jerry, and the family to go vegan at times? Um, no, it, it's been easier than I thought because the recipes in this book were all foods that you would want to eat. Like, I don't think anyone in my family would think this was vegan. You don't look at this and think vegan. No, everything is really rich and delicious and satisfying and really easy to make and it's not made with foods that are complicated. Mm -hmm. and, and all the ingredients are available across the country. You had me a queso, so chill. Okay, so I hear something sizzling down here. Yeah. What are we cooking up? You got some fritters. This is like the, the sweet potato. Yeah, and then here. Sweet potato and cauliflower fritters. Obviously, we know by now that cauliflower is so good for us. This is a cauliflower rice situation? Yeah. Uh, well, you just put it in a food processor and pulse it a bunch of times. It depends how you like it. Um, these are fritters. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> they are <laughs> the audience. Yeah, they're really happy. Really participatory audience here. Yes. Uh, you want to get these a golden brown. Yes. Thank you right. for flipping. Flip for you. So, you know, our spices in is really warm. Mm -hmm. This is cumin, cayenne pepper, salt pepper. Yeah. And then you like it this because of the smoky flavor? Yeah. And it's just like a warmer, I think, and like I will make these for Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, your typical fur has tons of eggs in it. We are not doing that. We're adding flour. And that keeps it sticks to the back of your mind. That's right. And if you don't like quickly cilantro, because a lot of folks don't. Parsley. Isn't that funny that I'm uh, 23 and me, they ask you if you like cilantro or not? I'm a cilantro fan. Yes. Can't go wrong with cilantro. So my husband right. is not. No. no. Oh, never no. Never no. Never. So, parsley. Oh, parsley. Look at this. Yes. Look at this, guys. All the recipes, everything you want. Look at this. Thanksgiving. This is really, we're ready to go here. Yeah, so here we are. We can make one. Okay. Guys, you can eat. It's all coming up. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to pop one in. And we're going to move on to the cookbook, everybody. Does this cookbook, Vegan at Times, is out right now. We're going to eat these, and we're going to help the ginger. Thank you. See, I knew we were sisters, Cecilia. I love cilantro, too. All right, how about we do this? We talk about Broadway, because Disney on Broadway is celebrating the holidays with a great Black Friday sale on Aladdin and the Lion King. We just saw it. It's so good. Well, it is available right now through Cyber Monday to get tickets. You just go to DisneyOnBroadway.com forward slash Double the Magic for the details. And coming up here on GMA, we're going to have a special live performance of Aladdin like you have never seen it before. They're taking us on an incredible magic carpet ride. Let's go ahead and get checked for now, though. A little closer to home. Here's a look at our eight-day forecast. Cool and blustery today. 41 degrees, but good for travel tonight. Clear and cold. Warming up for Thanksgiving, but we have some impacts Friday with rain and some mountain snow. Good for the weekend. And this year, so many families are gathering for Thanksgiving after skipping last year due to the pandemic. So this morning, our chief medical correspondent, Dr. Jennifer Ashton, here to tell us how we celebrate safely. We've got our time made, and it has rapid tests on it. So I need to know, as we do this, and we're all planning to have folks over, what are the general safety rules for 2021? Well, I think first acknowledge that there are people with considerable amounts of stress this holiday season about and the pandemic, you know, this is our second Thanksgiving during the pandemic. So there are some steps that I think
think people can take. And the tests, as you mentioned, are really number one because they're much more readily available. They can be kind of pricey. They can be about $24 uh, in most retailers for two tests. But the tips really to kind of increase that safety buffer is, yes, you can ask people to do these rapid tests right before they come into your gathering or party. You know, masking, obviously, when not eating or drinking, if, especially if people are high risk or if they feel more comfortable distancing when possible so maybe you're not going to cram people in around the table like we used to um, and then lastly if you use these tests and you get a positive result believe it act on the positive and do not go in or stay home obviously if you're feeling sick with anything not just real bit so do it before don't make it like part of the day no, exactly no it's not for the dessert Air slow is key so if you do have that table set people are kind of spread out doing this right. it really make that of a difference ventilation is critically important now obviously in some parts of the country you can gather outdoors weather permitting in other parts that's not a realistic option so yeah you want to open doors or windows safely if possible at least two um, those fans over the stove or if you have one in the bathroom for steam or smoke they work those should be turned on your AC HVAC should the fan should be on, on not auto and then those air purifiers also uh, that you can get at retailers definitely work and they can help so it's all about the airflow I love that you are coining terms so you coined <laughs> something called meal dynamics yes. that's not a medical term and nor is it a cooking term but meal dynamics means you know maybe rethink how we actually serve the meal um, and instead of you know everyone family style helping themselves do a buffet have one person pre-plate the meals and then you know don't you love this ginger where our glasses are labeled so if you yes, put it I need it every year that's the same. Always the, this is this. that's right and, and remember it's not just about covid here it's about gi viruses and other things just some some safety tips from a medical standpoint but enjoy it we have a lot to be grateful for well i am looking forward to thanksgiving and we'll be absolutely enjoying <laughs> some of your meal dynamic tips thank you my dear thank you thank you jeff Grabs, and thank you to everybody and happy thanksgiving and a safe one to everyone coming up here on gma are you ready <laughs> A spectacular performance, Aladdin taking over Times Square. It's a good one.
Emmys this Christmas season. We've got Ghirardelli, we've got chocolate covered cordials, Terry's oranges, get them while they last, Maine Needham's, Panatone, Lemon Chocolate Sandworks, lots of candy. Get your Thank you. Shots and In the pursuit of perfection, Brown Training Market offers seafood from only the highest quality sustainable sources. Unless you catch your own, there is no better way to sample exclusively fresh seafood. Brown Training Market, the freshest seafood, the finest caviar, world class quality. Open Tuesday through Saturday. Brown Training Market, Commercial Street, Portland. This is Color Collection. We wanted to show you it is not an age, it's an attitude. So we decided to photograph mothers and daughters representing five different decades. They picked out what they wanted to wear and how they wanted to wear it. They love that we had all the colors all the time. Yes, this is Color Collection. Proving yet again, it is not an age, it is an attitude. Color Collection shops at Falmouth Village, Route 1 Falmouth. The best value for your money is always at the Furniture Gallery. We're posting the new inventory arriving weekly from Ashley, Lane, Soda, Simmons, and Restaurant. And now, during our Black Friday event, save on our huge selection of mattresses and furniture for every room in your home. Free with the perfect living room, dining room, bedroom set, or mattress, special financing is available. Support main family-owned businesses and save money. The Furniture Gallery opens seven days a week in Augusta, Bedford, Forum, and North Window. You know what Friday is? Yes, it's Black Friday. And where can we find the best Black Friday deals and steals? Sorry, you are the best. Live only for GMA viewers. Up to 75% off with free shipping. It's Good Morning America's Black Friday deals and steals blowout. Now, with so much hope for a brighter tomorrow filled with sunshine, it's time to rise and shine. And we're celebrating travel all across the country. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. We're celebrating with ABC's Good Morning America. Thanks for watching, everybody. We got something coming. Wait, wait for it. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Friday evening. 
thank you. 858 right now. The new CDC reporting nearly 1,100 additional cases of COVID-19. That covers Saturday through yesterday. And 28 more people have died from the virus. 298 people are now in the hospital. That's the most so far we've seen in our state. Just under 68% of the state's total population is now fully vaccinated. And nearly a quarter of eligible kids have had their first dose. Let Kelly Ryan is coming up next. That will do for us this morning. Have a great day. Get ready for an adventure with all your Disney friends as they make their dreams come true. Share the excitement and memories at Disney on Ice presents Mickey and Friends. Coming to Cross and Church during the December 23rd for 27. Tickets on sale now. Visit DisneyOnIce.com for show details. The Furniture Super Store, the Furniture Super Store, the Furniture Super Store. Black Friday Furniture and Mattress Weekend Blowout. That's right, get to the Furniture Super Store and take advantage of huge savings in all departments, plus get doorbuster specials on all furniture and mattresses. The Furniture Super Store. <laughs> Is now. It's all this month at some the time. And it's our latest Black Friday event ever. You'll get huge savings all month long on all major tire brands, including Goodyear, Mitchell, Yukon, Continental, and many more. But only while supplies last. Plus, buy four tires and you'll get $40 off all alignment and tire protection package. And you can save 10% on any auto service, but only this month. Black Friday is now in all this month at some of tire. The furniture simps are the furniture simps are the furniture simps are Black Friday furniture and mattress weekend blowout. That's right, huge savings store wide, plus get zero percent financing on our massive selection of in stock furniture mattresses. The furniture simps are not missing. Steve the Tory, first and foremost on Channel 8. It's live with Kelly Ryan. Thank you. And then we would have that, and we would just languish there 
before. And that's when you fell in love with each other. That was the beginning of the I mean, I, I don't remember. Kelly was talking about dating 27 years ago. And how it has changed. I'm talking about like rules of engagement 27 years ago versus now. And I'm like, who knows? Nowadays, who knows what, like, I, I wouldn't know how to date. I would not know how to meet someone. I certainly wouldn't be able to figure out an app. So that's like, so I would have to meet someone by accidentally bumping into them. Do you know what I mean? And the fact that you're playing all this out before the show, I'm just curious, what, what started the whole thing? What's the whole thing is we're talking about friends of ours that we know that have met and had successful relationships based on a one night stand. It was supposed to be a one night stand and they stayed together. Dating is just so much fun, is it? But it's just so much married and they're like, oh, well, we can't get a time out of a one night stand. And I go, you can't call it that. You had, you, you put on your first date and it developed into marriage. And good for them. Right. Because a one night stand means it would be over. Yeah. Exactly. I know people that are married that have lots of one night stands. Including <laughs> <laughs> with each other. Are you so, with the Thanksgiving and Day coming, the uh, victory in Philadelphia, it's a big deal. This is, you were watching this, right? I grew up watching it. Yeah, in, in my adult life, I have yeah, seen it. Many, many, yes, many, 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 many times. So it's the oldest Thanksgiving Day parade in the country over 100 years. For the first time, it's going to be nationwide broadcast live on Hulu. So it's going, it's going big. Yeah. In Philly, there's a 9 a.m. on WPVI 6 ABC. You mean now that I've been no way, shape, or form yeah, it's on it's finally got to the right time. Did, did you ever like, sit in the booth and, yes. and call floats? I didn't call the floats, but I sat in the booth. It's like part of the, part of the you know, when you're one of the guests. You're like a guest host. Right. You ride the float and then you go broadcast. And then you have a page that you're looking at that tells you everything about the float. Miss Sumner, I did the closing ceremonies for the Olympics and you had a match, right? Like, well, that's the different. That's very different. No, I was, I was terrified because you have to time what's passing then and tell all this history about yes, it. But that's so international weird. stuff. This is like right. the Philadelphia Thanksgiving Day Parade. Everybody's in a good mood. Eat, like, Everybody is like, I remember freezing my bajingas off. Bajingas <laughs> is a broadcaster. Freezing my bajingas off out there. And like total strangers running up with a hot toddy in hand. Right, yeah, 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 like, yeah. And me accepting it and drinking it because I was that cold. Right. Taking alcohol from strangers. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? Whereas you're broadcasting other countries, their closing ceremonies, the pageantry, the history, what they've won, how many, what their medal count is. That's scary. That's very different. Well, I don't know. I was, I was worried to just time it all right with the things that were happening on that on that stage. But this is cool that it's going on Hulu. Yeah. Uh, there, there also, um, there's this article about, I guess they, they rent the best cities, people who put on the best Thanksgivings in cities around the country. Wait, time out. Before you move to that, I just want to say one thing. It says... The, the, the Philadelphia Thanksgiving Day Parade is at 9 a.m. on WPVI 6 ABC, which is my hotel level of failure. I distinctly remember having to be, like, at the parade site. So at 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was one of the minutes, that's true. But at 4 a.m., so I'm wondering what was happening between <laughs> then, the size of my body temperature. <laughs> It goes, 
it goes from a season of the witch radio that's what it's called in my house season of the witch radio to holiday traditions <laughs> yeah it's uh, you know it's, we just the great christmas music is to play his who uh, plays christmas album it is just magic let me tell you about who play break it down I know, I know that you two were roommates or something. We, we, we spent Valentine's Day together. No, we spent Valentine's Day together. Okay, whatever. <laughs> whatever. But the, the details are murky. I still, like, try to retell it at certain events. It's never as funny because you need him to tell it. But you need him to tell it. Like, call him I'm gonna right down there oh, yeah. and ask him about the time he got a massage at a hotel. They, they, uh, you know, he checked into the hotel, he was on tour, and they were like, would you like a massage? We the hotel has spa services, we can set up a massage. And apparently he had never had a massage before. <laughs> and you just have to ask him to tell you. Did something happen under the peak? Everything happened. Under the shit. But he was, it's the way he tells it, he was like, he was so confused. He was getting it confused, and he was like, now what do I do? And, you know, the massage therapist was very professional and very clinical and was like, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you understand. You, you understand. You know, I am, but you have to have him tell the story, though, because it's so much fun mumbling it. He seemed well versed when I spent Valentine's Day night with him. I, I don't know. He seemed like he'd been through it before. I'm just telling you. I will call him after this broadcast, and I will send you a simply, You simply must. You simply must. Um, before we get to that, I just want to. Um, it's beginning. I know. I just want to get to the. Um, 52% of Americans identify wrapping gifts as the worst part of the holidays. I find that to be the best, most therapeutic, most rewarding, um, biggest bang for your buck thing that you could do for the holidays. Like if you want an activity, mm. that's a good activity. We just used the same bags for the last 20 years with the same car that we continue to cross out. Yeah, I can't see that. that doesn't wrap. See, I, I, she doesn't wrap. Mommy, don't. Oh, yeah, no, I know, I know. I still want to get my socks and underwear from you for Christmas, though. Uh, 52% of Americans say it's the worst part of the holidays. I'm not good at it. I'm not good at it. It always ends up, like, way too much paper on one end. Oh, gosh, I'm really good at it. It's, like, the only thing I'm skilled at. It's, like, my only skill. It's your only talent. <laughs> it's your Packing also. I'm a good packer, yes. And guess what? Yeah. You're a pretty good singer. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I... I'm also very good at packing gifts into my bag in a way that they arrive pristine. And I mean that as though... See, now you're bragging. Now you're going on all your, all your skills. I'm not bragging. I'm just I'm like, like really? you would think I wrapped it on location. <laughs> yeah. It's not good. But that's my whole thing. Like, that's it. That's all I got. That's my whole... <laughs> that's what I bring to the party. <laughs> that's like my skill set. There, there are no shows like... America's best wrapper. Like America's best gift wrapper. And then traveler across the country. Hey, think of you baking shows gift wrapping could be a show. You never know. Listen, it's at least a podcast. Like, at least a podcast. All right, today on the show, Jeremy Winter is here. We'll talk to Jeremy in a few. And now listen to this. Live's family Thanksgiving continues with a recipe for roasted cauliflower. Our very own Michael and our favorite, one of our top three favorite Galvin's, Misha Galvin. Were you, were you guys on the calling patch yesterday to get the calling? You know, my cauliflower is long gone, but I did stop at uh, Halsey Farms. Or you did, you, did you bring purple or white? Uh, purple and white and the oh, yellow colors. and the... Okay. Uh, I just want to get out of that. Misha looked at me and she goes, we use maple syrup. He's already upset about it. It's time for my holiday.
be like criminals or, or you know, uh, be unruly. And my first job is like they would pay you 50 bucks and they threw me in a closet and they said, just be unruly. They're going to try to arrest you. Just don't let them arrest you. I said, my God, I'm supposed to let the door be. And I like, hey, sir, we sir, can you let the door be? I can't get better than, you know, I get that salt on me. Thank you. 
Did you try? Oh, yeah, they sure can change any year. I sell more premiums. And more prescription costs. And save your money. It's so on Walmart. I'm on Medicare.gov now. Open enrollment ends December 7th. Use the plan finder at Medicare.gov to compare Medicare health and prescription plans. Comparing plans can really good. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services.
was like, oh, there's like bowls of cereal. And I would just sit there and I was like, why have I never eaten this buffet? As an adult. As an adult. Yeah. Like, why as an adult did I give up this? Yeah. yeah. I said, Jimmy, the simple things in life really get telling you. Don't say
Jane Lassen that she always gets a lot of kudos. And this is a perfect time of year. I mean, cauliflowers, this is what we normally think of. Uh-huh. You know, yeah, we do normally think of that. Okay, like that. but then there's also the, there's the purple. Wow. And there's the kind of the yellow. I always thought that was Jacane cauliflower. No, it's an heirloom. But then this, which uh, I'm not going to get into the name because it's uh, a yeah, controversy. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah, it's kind of conical. I think these are beautiful. It's I was thinking it is. Yes, but no one would wear it as a shoe. Accessory. You know, local is great if you can get it. Mm-hmm. All right. And so, first thing we do, let's start chopping up our cauliflower from our side. From our back. Mm-hmm. So, you can chop up the cauliflower, honey. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, yeah. so sometimes we're about to get to crushing it out. Okay. So, if you look at that, sometimes that helps to get this one. Okay. Make it, he 
energy reader. He sits there for most of the best flavor. Most of the early winter. And this trip will go on. We'll be right back to taste it. We'll finish up. Yeah. 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 Get ready for adventure. 
Make sure soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more, but it's so absorbent, you can use less. Enjoy it though with Charmin. Receiving truckloads of toys, clothing, 
opportunity to win for this Christmas season. Come check out the Holly Market Outlet in Lewis and Ann Winthrop. When they come into the ICU, they're so sick they actually can't breathe on their own anymore. Do you see the fear in their eyes? Sometimes they mutter, I wish I would have worn a mask. I wish I would have been vaccinated. There's a way that we can get through this. There's a way that we can overcome this, just like we did at the beginning, when we all banded together to take care of each other. This is how we can do that. It's the Black Friday sale at Lady Mullahan. This year, shop shoes and kits for the whole family with 20% off store wide. The sale starts November 20th and goes to November 28th, giving you a whole week of great Black Friday deals. Don't wait too long. Some of our most sought after brands are included in the sale. Come shop safely in store at your local Lady Mullahan or shop online at www.shoes.com. Use promo code HOLIDAY20 for 20% off your order. Exclusions apply. Chapter 11 Furniture. You buy it today, you get it today. If you need furniture, come to Chapter 11 Furniture. We've got so much inventory. Chapter 11 is offering special no credit needed financing. Chapter 11 in Lewiston delivers everywhere. Time the temperature from Fox Creek Casino, Southern Maine Casino. Listen to Greater Portland's new FM, 1025 WLOP. Now with better updates from WMT that includes total weather. Closed captioning spots in part by. Hi, so you're the scientist here. Does my albumin gel moisturizer really make my dry skin healthier in one day? It's true, Jen. This great vinyl formula moisturizes to help prevent dry skin. Impressive. Albumin. Okay, it's our nature. New daily moisture for face. This holiday, give your dogs the treats they deserve. Tasty blue treats. Buy one bag of blue treats. Get one bag free. I'm big too.
jitter bug flip too. It comes with a whole team of people who are really nice. Say she needs a ride somewhere, they're right there for her. Of course, Mrs. Turner. What time would you like to get picked up? She can even talk to a doctor or a nurse. I can write your prescription for that. If there's ever an emergency, she can get help with a touch of a button. I just press this button. How easy is that? The jitterbug flip too. Now 70% off at Best Buy, Rite Aid, and Walgreens. and going back 
back to DC. I have seen my husband more in the past 18 months than I have in eight years. Wow. And it was amazing. I'm like, I am grateful that I love to see him. <laughs> together and we were doing the grilled cheese sandwich and I was having to take from home. I am grateful for every camera person, sound person, oh, everybody. Your glam team is amazing. Oh, you know what? That's the thing. It, it takes a village and that's why um, this show is so special. Now, this recipe you have for us, I am told, was not an original. It was made by accident. Yes. What happened? Some of the best things are made by accident. So, I'm a recovering caterer now, and um, I was on my way to a client's home for Thanksgiving. She wanted the turkey to be made that day in her home so that it would smell really great. Well, my car broke down, and I still had to get from um, D.C. to Annapolis, and I got there late. And I, as a chef, I'm strategizing how am I going to do this turkey. I had two turkeys, so that the only way I can do just to do it is to break it down. Oh, to break it down like a chicken eight parts, get the breast done, and I have been doing that ever since. Wow. Yes. Okay, so let's launch it. We got this turkey breast here. Yes. We have this turkey breast. We're going to make a spicy gremolata. So, Tammy, you're going to be doing with, with me. Okay, yeah. We have chopped parsley. Oh, right. Okay. Right? And then we're going to chop some sage. All right. All right. I so I'm laying my sage on okay. like a cigar. Okay. Or whatever. But I knew you were going to say I knew it. I knew it. All right, go. Sorry. Uh -huh. And then I can have, have the garlic there. With you the can the side of your knife. Mm -hmm. And you can bang it. Whatever special piece you have. Um, oh, yeah. okay. I have a little more than you, I guess. Okay, so that goes in there too. Okay. All right. Lemon zest. Uh, lemon zest, yeah. Yeah. Microplane. Uh, okay. If you're ever looking for a housewoman gift, just give a box with the microplane. They will love you for I never realized how much I was going to use a microplane until I bought one. Turkey. Mm -hmm. We have the lemon, we have the sage, we have the parsley, we're going to add some salt and chili flakes. And when you're zesting, just zest the yellow part. Right. I have to be honest with you, when I saw that you were making a spicy gremlin, I was like, I, I can't imagine that with turkey. But it just brings in a whole different flavor palette to your Thanksgiving. Exactly. Like exactly. So you mix all that up, the olive oil. Yep, we're going to add the olive oil. Now, you don't use a food processor with this?
cornbread. Let's share it with the TAM fam now. Take us through it. How do we do it? So let's make, let's put all the dry ingredients together. Right. You have your yellow cornmeal together. Got it. Here, you're going to add in salt. Mm -hmm. You have just a little bit of sugar because this is a replacement for um, the, the cookies that Santa will get. Yeah. Okay, because it's highly controversial. I make sugar, as you can see, I just put all the sugar in this cornbread because I am southern to my tooth and I feel like anything sweet, but there's a big controversy over savory versus sweet cornbread. I'm savory. Texas is sweet. I'm I'm sweet I'm cornbread. The other chief say is savory. Oh my gosh. Okay, so stop so it. It's not a topic. Okay, not I'm not going to have the TFM vote on which they like, but I know y'all like sweet cornbread.
they're being toasted. They taste much better when they're toasted and brown. And you want to just get them to the point where they're warm and then basically brown. And it's okay if they're uneven like this. It doesn't matter. Some are darker than others. They all taste great. But his one is nice because it's a sweet nut. Really? It's got a rich, nutty flavor, but it's also sweet. It's in the, you know, the famous chocolate his nut spread. It's made with his and I really love that. So that, that goes on the side for a little while. Then we take our bacon and uh, render it. So in the same pan, render bacon. Which means to uh, melt the fat, make the bacon a little bit crispy, get okay. that nice smoky smell and flavor into the dish. I love these big chunks that they've made in the kitchen. I know. So I like that. They're doing a good job of selling bacon and making it. <laughs> <laughs> like, you exactly. can spend a whole big chunk of bacon. You're going to do bacon, do bacon. Don't just give it a little crumble. So you got nice thick um, pieces of bacon, all nice and crisp. And so moving over to your sweet potato yeah. here. Yes. So what we did is steam or boil, or you can even cook sweet potatoes in a microwave. They cook great in a microwave. If you wrap them in plastic and then cook them for 10 minutes, they're fantastic. Sweet potatoes are one of the healthiest vegetables on earth. So don't be afraid of eating sweet potatoes. It's not meant to be an indulgent treat. It's actually really good for you. Um, it's a little different than a yam. Yeah. There's, an often, there's often this misconception, what's a yam, what's a sweet potato? A sweet potato is a tuber, a yam is a root. They're very different. See, uh, you get that mix up all the time. I actually, even times I have to say, Siri, what's the difference between, I do that all the time. It's funny, right? Yeah. Yeah, you actually can't find a yam if you want to. So you, you're way ahead of me, man. I need to catch up. All right, so we're mashing the sweet potatoes. Oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you were, when it came to school, you were 19 years old, and I understand you tried to impress the group by making a Thanksgiving meal that didn't work out so right. Yeah, so, uh, when you're a young culinary student, the first thing you want to do is undo everything that's good and remake it in your, you know, as in your style. So, uh, one Thanksgiving, I was about 18, and uh, this is my sister's favorite holiday. She lives for Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. She loves it three times as much. But she loved the traditional one. So by the time I was 18, we were having a very traditional Thanksgiving. And this year, I decided to take the turkey apart and make turkey roulade. Doesn't that sound terrible? Turkey roulade with sweet potato velouté. And, oh, it was awful. The worst. And I served it. It took me hours, and she was crying at the table. So disappointed. So you became like the Grinch who stole things. Okay. Yeah, you redeemed yourself and you have this awesome recipe. Yeah, needless to say, never done that again. I was going to say, did you never done Thanksgiving? It's perfect already. All right. All right, so you mash the sweet potato. It can be rough. doesn't have to be a perfect mash. Mm -hmm. You add butter. You add the bacon. Half the bacon, half the nuts. Okay. Butter. I add about half the bacon. And a reminder, these recipes are all on our website. This is brown sugar? This brown sugar, yeah. So we got the molasses in it, the vanilla. The brown sugar is, I'm going to do about half of this. It looks like a lot. A little bit of cinnamon. I put all of the brown sugar in mine. <laughs> Sweet is always okay. Oh, well, it's gonna be sweet. Yeah. All right, you got a little cinnamon here. And then, uh, so, yeah, a little bit of cinnamon. That's uh, just a pinch. Okay. Okay. And a, a little taste. Oh, it's good. Mm. Okay, now I'm with your mom now when she dug this sweet potato pie. This really, if you poured this in a crust, I it guess sweet potato pie 100%. Yeah, yeah. But I think about sweet potato pie or pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving as something that has a custard base. Usually there's eggs and cream and that kind of thing. This is really a side dish. Mm. Dessert hybrid. I love it. So, I love it. Okay. It's super easy to make, which I like. I'm, I'm not great with pies. I don't know about you. I can cook any single really? food. You know they say that people, pies, I kind of am terrible. Really? So, they say people who can cook all they can't bake, that it's hard to find someone is, who does both well. It's two different minds. It's really? two different kinds of thinking. Yeah. So we're going to spread this into an eight by eight dish. Yeah, exactly. I'm just going to pour mine in. Okay? Yeah, pour yours in. No problem. Uh, I'm the shortcut way. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, no problem. When we come back, we're going to put the finishing touches on the sweet potato broth and rock on the spare bow after the break. <laughs> Are y'all ready for a show? Join the Tamron Hall Show audience. Go to TamronHallShow.com. Welcome to the Tamron Hall Show. Do you need furniture today? We have it. Chapter 11 Furniture is busting, busting, busting at the seams with furniture. We are also 
offering our special no credit needed financing. Chapter 11 Furniture delivers same day. Chapter 11 Lewiston. That's the sound of justice. That's the sound of insurance companies fleeing you because it means the lawyers of town. You know, it's easy to say you want to help injured workers soon, but as you might imagine, aggressive posturing is not what impresses judges. Careful preparation and knowledge of the law is what wins cases. So let us put our decades of experience in actual courtroom settings to work for you. Shahid and Gordon, it's different. When you get to be 65, you have little patience for nonsense and inefficiency. That's why when I qualified for Medicare, I went with WellCare. Benefits include an over-the-counter allowance for items like toothpaste, cold remedies, and mouthwash, plus a flex card to pay for extra dental, vision, and hearing expenses. WellCare gets it. They get rid of all the hassles and give us the great benefits that we want. Don't wait. Be like Joe and make the right call. If you haven't checked out the Holiday Bargain Outlet, you absolutely need to. What a great, great store. The Holiday Bargain Outlet sells everything. Come check it out today. The Holiday Bargain Outlet is in Lewiston, also Winthrop. On a day like this, you may be glad your AAA membership gets you great travel deals to warm places, or that AAA can get you discounts on a new pair of snow boots, or could even save you hundreds on auto insurance. But mostly, on a day like this, be glad you have a AAA membership for the legendary 24-7 roadside assistance. Over 50 million members rely on AAA, America's largest motor club and most highly recommended major roadside assistance provider. We answer over 32 million roadside calls from members every year. We're always with you, getting you back on the road fast, covering you in any car, whether you're the driver or passenger. And that's important on a day like this. The gift of AAA membership is now just $53. We'll waive the admission fee and add a second family member for free. Plus, you'll get a $20 Visa gift card. That's a combined value of $118, now only $53 through this limited time offer. Call or visit AAA.com slash AAA gift. <laughs> This time of year, one of my favorite things to make is my butternut squash and bacon and curry and cheese. It's even better than it sounds. Should we go? First, you'll roast butternut squash. You've got rosemary, olive oil, salt, and pepper. While the squash is roasting, fry some bacon on the stove top. And then let the saute some shallots in the leftover bacon grease.
compliment. It's not as sweet as I thought it was going to be. It's a magic outfit. Tell me for all 
blessings in my life. Oh, I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. And this Thanksgiving, I'm going to be grateful for all the blessings in my life. I'm gonna 
you finish up. So you let me finish? Yeah. Okay. Well, I have to try. So a little bit of the flour goes in. We're going to do like about half. Uh-huh. Oh, Lord, I'm making it all the here. That's okay. Listen, one of the things I tell people, this show is not a cooking show. I love to cook. Yeah. But I don't let perfection get in the way of good. Yeah. And this is going to be delicious. And this is how I cook at home. I'm just being honest. Carla Hall was on earlier. You, I love Carla. you guys are all amazing chefs. But I wanted the spirit of our cooking. Past or present. How long does this policy last? 
R995 plan is permanent protection. Can my rate increase later? Never. Once you're insured, your rate is locked in for life. You can get whole life insurance with options starting at just $9.95 a month. Have you thought about life insurance to put it off? Don't regret what you didn't do yesterday. Call now and feel great about saying yes today. Call now and you'll also get this free beneficiary planner. Call one 237 now for free information and your free gift. That's 1-800-237-0131. Call now. <laughs> Two-time shop champion, winner, musician, and author, Lazarus Lynch. Before the break, we were just knee-deep into getting our batter ready for his church hat lemon cake. And now we're getting ready for the glaze. I love this. So we have the batter. You have this beautiful butt cake that we're pouring the batter in. Yes. How long do you make it for? 325, like an hour, 15 minutes. I love that. Okay, so I'm going to other things. So once it's done, and I have one here. Okay, you're going to give it a little tap. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Make sure it's all the way full before you do that. Otherwise, yeah. it won't be as pretty. It is beautiful. I do that. And so the glaze here, what's the secret the to the glaze? You know, a glaze is really simple. I love doing just some lemon juice. Okay. Some confectioner sugar, powdered sugar. Mm. Okay, a little bit. And so you have about four to five tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. Mm, that's right. right. And just mix it, mix it, mix it. All right. Way too much lemon juice, but I love lemon juice. I love lemon. You know, what's, what's really interesting about this cake is a lot of people who don't love lemon, when they taste this cake, they're just like, it's just enough. Just lemon. enough. Mm -hmm. Just enough. Okay. You know, it you go. Just a little bit. <laughs> you sang us into the segment earlier. You've got this album, Sanctuary. Uh, what's the inspiration behind it? You know, the inspiration behind Sanctuary was I didn't actually know I was writing an album. I just sort of started writing songs after I wrote my cookbook. I just felt like I needed to express differently. Mm -hmm. And so I just started writing music and I hooked up the piano and really the Holy Spirit just gave me songs. Oh and uh, so what this album really means to me, it's a very personal album. It really talks about my journey, going through our journey. Everybody's got a story. Yes, they do. Everyone's got a path and a purpose. And I had to sit down and realize that the creator had a purpose for my life. Aww. And what this album is, so what the album is, is really just sort of my awakening to that, my understanding of that. And Your sanctuary. Encouraging of everyone to create their own sanctuary, whatever that looks like. All right, we're going to find
to tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, or if you had a vaccine or plan to. Emerge Tremfiant with Tremfiant. Ask your doctor about Tremfiant today. Did you know that a furniture store in Hansapi, New Hampshire, many say, has the most beautiful showrooms in the world? That's right. The most beautiful furniture showrooms in all the land is in Hansapi, New Hampshire. That store is Green Mountain Furniture. Customers, visitors, tourists tell us all the time how beautifully designed Green Mountain Furniture really is. We invite you to come and see the beautiful Green Mountain Furniture, Route 16, Hansapi, New Hampshire. When we switched to triple insurance and we bundled our home and auto, we were shocked at the savings. Not only did we increase our coverage significantly, but we also saved hundreds of dollars. I switched to AAA because I saved over four hundred fifty dollars. That makes a big difference in my budget. Switch to AAA insurance today, and you can save an average of five hundred and thirty-seven dollars on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, Geico, even Allstate. Call now for your free auto insurance code to find out how much you can save. This type of savings on the insurance goes a long way in helping me do the things I like to do. Because of the savings that we get from having AAA insurance, we're able to do more of the things that we love. We might go to the store, go to the concert, go out to eat. That makes me feel good about spending the money on the road so I think we can. To find out how much you can save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 877-464-9048 for your free auto insurance quote today. AAA Insurance, helping you save more. Time the temperature from Oxford Casino, Southern Mays Casino.
to do a little Thanksgiving pregame stuff. Mm. And the table's set and something in front of us smells good. <laughs> so can the host of Worst Cooks in America, Amber Ruff, please come on out and tell us what we got going on. vegetarian leave off the whipped cream and it can be vegan for those kind of people nice. or you know and it's kind of like a diy <laughs> you know where you can i don't know you're not vegan. you can't even have whipped cream if you're a vegan no 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 it's got to do with vegetarians i guess well they come <laughs> Yes, 
few farmers. Our strength, our power, our purpose it starts with you. So let's start here with collagen that supports our body from the inside out. Instantly clear everyday congestion with Vic Sinex Saline.
difficult thing. They say when you, if you get married, when it, it's raining, it's good luck. I mean, we got married in a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> we should have great I got married in a fever. <laughs> You just, just stick some cheese in them, wrap it up, and then the only tricky part about this is that you do a little crust with um, maple syrup and sherry vinegar. Yes. And you have to be really care careful about the maple syrup because it that can burn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, what if you didn't want to use tape? You want to use something else in there? What else could you? Well, that would be a very just tasty the recipe. Well, <laughs> well, well, once you put bacon on something, it's all united. Right? Bacon makes it better. Right. With the, uh, the chicken liver and the bacon, what's that called? I'm not, like, I'm not oh, yes, that you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can stuff anything you want. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna go and come back because we're gonna see you in a bit. Yeah. Oh, oh, so it's it's keep off the table this Thanksgiving, according to a Quinnipiac poll. Yeah. They found that 66% of adults want to avoid the subject altogether. And the question is, will that be tricky? I don't think it will be, because I think people will be so glad to see all the family and all the stuff and go through all the kids and all the grandma, how you doing, all of that stuff, that the way to do it is at the end of the meal, hmm. when everybody's sitting, stomach hanging on the side. Somebody will say, well, I don't know about all this gas. <laughs> and you have to say, well, if you're worried about gas, get a plug-in car. <laughs> and then zip out the door. Say, see you next year. <laughs> and that will take care of everything. Well, you know, I, I like to talk politics. Oh, I think I'm, I'm interested in the subject. Sure. They always say, don't talk politics or religion. Mm -hmm. What's more important than those? Those are interesting topics. Yeah. Uh, we're going to ask Grandma if she's still ovulating. I mean, these are... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> may I suggest... I'd like to suggest... Some grandmas mm -hmm. might not still be ovulating. Yeah, I would like to suggest <laughs> that you, everybody out there, come out to your family this Thanksgiving. Just come out. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Yeah. Come out the door. No, come out of the door. Come out. Come out. What are you If you get gay, I'm not gay. I can't follow their conversation. I mean, be be your own interview. You know, I'm old enough now. I know that life is short. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Okay. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. Yeah. So that's why I can so keep yakking. Right. Yeah. But I, I say that you should be yourself. Yes. This is my philosophy in life. I've been here 25 years. I've always been the same. I'm annoying as I am. You're only 25? <laughs> so my, my whole thing is you will come out and be yourself. Don't, yeah. don't let anybody tell you what you have to be in that right. life. Yeah. 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 This will be our family's first year without Manny's parents, and they were just such a big war and a It's yeah. going to be a very, a very hard year for us, but um, I, I do think that life is so short, yeah. and it's, it, things come at you so unexpectedly, and I, I do think you have to be authentic. You have to um, embrace these moments, embrace your family, and um, I think you discuss what you want to discuss. Yeah, I, I really do, and um, if, it's, if it's coming out, if it's politics, um, I think you have to be true to your feelings. Talk about what you want to talk about, um, and there and embrace fights. every single moment. There are going to be fights. There are going to be there. There may be fights. Maybe there's going to be maybe there will be dead fights. What do you think? I think, I think uh, use it as an exercise in listening to someone that feels differently than you. Yeah. Because that's at a lot of family tables, and if you can't do it for people you actually love, why would you do it for your fellow American citizens and neighbors? And so I think it's a good time to practice flexing the muscle yeah. because you actually do love these people. Yeah. I think so. Oh, no. <laughs> I think so, but I think the first thing you have to do is greet your family because life is short and yeah. not everybody made it. Love yeah. Not everybody Love made it. That's what I'm saying. So make sure, make sure that you recognize yeah. who you are as a family yeah. and what is missing at the table. And who is missing at the table? Absolutely. And make sure you honor that. It's hard to fight with people when you're celebrating the lives of those you've lost. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be right back. So. <laughs>
never revealed before. Today is the first day of my entire life. A special podcast series from The View is taking you behind the table. She was scared to put Jesus out of me, but I had no idea really what I was getting myself into. Behind the scenes is always a bit of shock. All the episodes are out now and ready for you to binge today. Find them by searching The View wherever you get your podcast. What do cars, trucks, and SUVs have in common? They all break down, and those repairs can cost you thousands unless you call CarShield. Their administrators help pay for your covered repairs. Monthly plans can include coverage for engines, transmissions, radiators, air conditioning, computer systems, and more. It's not about if your car's going to break down. It's when CarShield administrators save me $3,500. Maybe a third man or about 100 bucks a month. Get all the protection I need from CarShield Administrators. With CarShield's nationwide coverage, you choose the mechanic or dealer for your repairs. Plus, there's no long-term contract. Call CarShield before it's too late and avoid another expensive repair bill. I want to keep my car on the road as long as possible, and CarShield Administrators helps me do that. Your car will eventually break down. Protect yourself by calling CarShield now. Call for your free quote on affordable month-to-month protection you can't afford to drive without. Lock in your rank by calling now. Don't get stuck with your car on a warranty. Call CarShield. Shield and say 
chicken sausage. I mean, you could do regular, I mean, you could do any kind of sausage, but I thought I would do a little twist on it, like a chicken sausage or a turkey sausage, yeah. considering, you know, the time of year we're in. That is so oh, delicious. My Aunt Rose used to make these with the regular Italian sausage. I think Aunt Rose loves those are kind of rice. She can't even know all the recipes today. Well, she only has bread, but she used to make the, everything with sausage. So when you get, <laughs> when you get the chicken sausage is that it can dry out a little bit so i would put a little bit of water in there to just help keep it nice and moist uh -huh. yeah, because yes. sometimes chicken and turkey sausage chicken and evergreen for sunny school <laughs> yes, no, right. chickens are our friends usually yeah they're actually not they live in sunny's house this is where they live today she wants to she wants to know right here really no but they're so delicious they're nice but they're so delicious and then there's the egg situation. Yeah, that's true. Okay. You're the host of a show called The Worst Cooks in America, and it comes back January 5th. What It seems like a little bit of a circus. It is. But, um, I mean, it's The Worst Cooks in America, and they truly are. Every season, every season when I think I'm mentally prepared for what they're going to do to food, I so am not. Um, but so then we teach them and we help them. We put them through a series of games and challenges. But you see these people like really dig deep and make transformations. And then they take that back to their families or whatever. What is the biggest thing that they do wrong? And we're still doing it and like, I've been doing this for 23 seasons. Yeah. They, they, everything. They just burn everything. Do you walk out that they're feeling so talented? Uh, they, do I? Because I would walk out being like, I really have a gift. I think that, and I'm like, you know where you are, right? <laughs> and they put themselves there. So, I mean, I think most of the, the time when what happens with people is that they just have never learned how yeah. to do um, And then when I ask people, um, or, well, what happens when you follow a recipe? And they're like, a recipe? Well, that's uh, the thing. Like, that's I'm crazy. And I'm like, but that is the big mistake that they make. If you can read, you can cook. Yeah. Sometimes. You think. Sometimes. Sometimes. You can read. If you can read, you can saute. Sometimes. You can boil. You can broil. Just read the damn thing. Some of it is a gift. I do. I love it. You're a superb chef. Yes. Well, some of it is your love language, right? I like to think so. Yes, it does. really about reading the recipe and following it and um, you know that yeah. really can prevent yeah. it falls. And another tip, read the whole recipe yeah. before you start. Yeah. Because I've gotten into the middle and I, oh my god, I put all the olive oil in already and they said to hold it. Yeah. Right. Or yeah. yeah. Oh, throw it in the oven for three hours. Yeah. And short ribs and like, they work on the Make sure you have all of your, your ingredients and do everything in the right order. Is that yeah, right? exactly. That's what we call miso. It's like a symphony. It's not just the recipe. It's the timing. Yeah. It's the timing. I want to say I don't know if there were another pair of newlyweds in the house. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Newlyweds are to your social security check. I 
called to save money. I called to check my zip code. I called to get everything I deserve. Don't miss the enrollment period deadline. Call now. It's free. Call 1-800-206-7400. That's 1-800-206-7400 now. Black Friday now at JCPenney. Shop thousands of deals all week long, like a Cook's air fryer, jackets for the family, and Levi's fit for everyone. No coupon needed, plus our best bonus rewards ever. After Black Friday, JCPenney. Nightful Severe gives you powerful relief for your worst cold and flu symptoms. On Sunday night, and every night. Nightful Severe, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head, best sleep with a cold medicine. We're eating and drinking foods and beverages that are very acidic. It can soften the enamel, prone to more repair. What it's doing is driving more minerals deep into the enamel surface. That's going to help actively repair. Prone enamel is taking it to another level. Chef Macy's Black Friday specials now. Like 40% off Tommy Hilfiger and Nausicaa. Charter Club Cashmere, just $39.99. Arthritis gel so good for arthritis pain. Salon Boss contains the most prescribed topical pain relief ingredient. It's clinically proven, reduces inflammation, and comes in original prescription strength. Salon Boss, it's good medicine. <laughs> People need to replace their windows or patio doors, but they put it on because they think it'll be too expensive. Hi, I'm Ann Rover. I'm here with Michael Smith from Renewal by Anderson. You really work with the customers to find affordable solutions. We do, Andy. We're the replacement window division of Anderson, one of the largest window manufacturers in North America. So we can usually offer our customers larger discounts and better financing than smaller companies or contractors. Other window companies don't offer your same window and door installation method. Our installers have installed thousands of windows. Our windows are manufactured to precisely fit your specific window openings. So if you have any beautiful trim that you'd like to keep, we can often install your windows without impacting that trim. You won't get this with most vinyl windows. And you offer a free window and patio door diagnosis? We do. We'll come to your home and assess your current windows. Then we'll leave you with an exact price quote that's good for an entire year. So you're not a high pressure company. My background is in home remodeling as a carpenter. I've seen every window problem out there. So now I just want to help homeowners make their homes more beautiful and comfortable with the right window. Our countdown to Black Friday sale is going on now. Save $349 on windows. Save $949 on doors. Get an extra 3% discount or don't pay anything for two years. Call before November 26, 207. 606-3838. New York City's coming back live with the return of New Year's Eve in Times Square and tomorrow's Thanksgiving Day Parade. But for crime to COVID, there's still a lot of problems to fix. So here with his plan for the future, please welcome New York's Marilyn Eric Adams. you do that spectacularly well because New York, like much of the country, is dealing a lot of crises. Uh, we've got a crime surge, apparently. I mean, uh, that hasn't happened in a while. A COVID surge and a homeless crisis. So, uh, happy Thanksgiving, everyone, by the way. Um, <laughs> I was like, really? But, yeah, we always had problems. Yes, this is a big city. A lot of different kinds of people working and running around, you know? And, and we've got to turn things around if we want to see this city thrive again. So, um, I hope know this is a general question but do you have a specific idea of how you're going to turn this around yes yes and first let me say this um this is thanksgiving and sometimes people believe it's thanks receiving mm -hmm. it's not it's thanksgiving giving, we should right. be out giving uh, to people because we're blessed mm -hmm. and no matter how challenging our city is right now uh we're all blessed and i say over and over again i said on the campaign trail 
the prerequisite to prosperity is public safety and justice. We could have, we could have them both. Justice. We could have a safe city that is going to give the economic stability we need. People are going to feel better about you know, the subway system, our tourism, which is a multi-billion dollar industry. Uh, it's going to invite people back to New York. And it's about making sure our city is safe. And from that, we will build a strong foundation. You told them you had more people come here. Yes. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Well, Mr. Mayor elect, you know, the Kyle Rittenhouse acquittal um, um, and the lionizing of him by, by some um, and, and the pending decision in the online. Um, murder trial have reunited, reignited it in my view, this debate over citizens um, taking the law into their, their own hands, this sort of vigilante justice. Um, as a former police captain, what is your take on these cases and this trend? Well, I, I, you're, you're, I think you're dead on. I think when you do an analysis of what's happening across the entire country, we have the extremes really attempting to take away our way of life in America. The extremes are far, far right and far, far left. Uh, right here in the city over the weekend, you have to be proud boys, they were here. Far, far right, extremely disruptive. And then you also had a group in this city in Queens who covered themselves in all black to give the impression they were African Americans and they were not. And they were harassing white residents in the city because they want to create a real schism. And they're from out of our city. Mm. This is not what New York is. 47% of New York is in Brooklyn speak the language other than English at home. We are a diverse city. We live together every day to, uh, together. But there are outside entities that want to come in and disrupt our city. We can't allow that to happen also our country. But also we missed there was a 17 year old who had a gun that he could not legally buy mm -hmm. but he was able to carry shot on people that he went into that community to focus on but we also had a 17 year old here in this city who shot a 22 year old young man I was a young man so what am i saying what are 17 year olds doing doing with guns in this, guns in this country and we stay on the high end and debate one trial debated America's on trial. We have an over-proliferation of guns and our children can get guns and not laptops, iPads, so the right. kind of things that they need. Mm -hmm. That is my whole yeah, yeah. You actually lead right into my question. New York, New York actually has one of the most restrictive gun laws in the country, but the Supreme Court looks to be on the verge of overturning it for being too restrictive. How concerned are you about this? And will this mean that, that more people will have guns in their hands? Yeah, this, this is frightening what is about to play out on the stage of the Supreme Court. Um, as soon as that court uh, was put in place, I knew we were going to have some real problems. Right now, New York City, we have one of the most stringent uh, gun laws on concealed mm -hmm. weapons. Mm -hmm. They are now going to rule that you can carry those concealed weapons uh, in our city, on the subway station, uh, and, and restaurants. They, they could. We, we really must look at this, and then we must adjust once the road comes out. Uh, How do you do that? Well, I believe that we could look at the New York City Police Department right now. They do the actual permitting of oh. uh, firearms. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we could adjust it to comply with the law, but also put in place barriers and restrictions that people can't uh, get the guns in the first place. We don't know exactly what the ruling is going to be, uh, but we must be uh, vigilant on it. I'm, I'm really concerned about this law that's coming down. And when I met with the president uh, a couple of months ago, I talked about the uh, combination of city, state, and federal agencies looking at how do we coordinate together to stop the illegal gun dealers to get these guns in our northern cities. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, one of the things that, that are concerning people is the insanity of our bail laws. People don't realize our bail laws are a little bit different than everybody else's. And I want to know how you're going to fix it because this stuff is ridiculous. What's happening, people get arrested, they go in, they're out you know, 25, 30 minutes later, and people run in a mug. Right. That's, you know, I, I don't understand it. And I want to know, as mayor, can you adjust the bail laws so they actually do what they should be doing, which is helping people do what they need to do without just letting everybody out? I had that same frustration with uh, me, and I called in the author of that bill, mm -hmm. Latrice Walker, an amazing uh, sister, and she sat down with me and went through the, the, the law. You know what's really happening? 
when they first came out, we were able to get them to modify the bail laws because they were items on their robbery, burglary that should not have been on there. Mm -hmm. They modified that. What is happening now is not the bill. The judges, they are not uh, actually putting bail on where they could put bail on. You can't have someone arrested with a gun on Monday mm -hmm. and they're not on the street on Tuesday. Yeah. So we need to ensure that the judges, now as the mayor, I appoint criminal court judges. And I want to be extremely clear. If you don't understand that my city must be safe mm -hmm. and you can't get caught up in the politics of the city, mm -hmm. you must make sure that those who are opposing imminent threats to the city, mm -hmm. they are not going to be placed back on streets get back into my community that is not going to happen so you can do that yes that's the power of appointing the right judges okay to make the, we should be using the kindred's law better those with mental health illnesses that you know, refuse to take their medication mm -hmm. we should be making sure those who are extremely violent are placed back in our jails but then there's something else we have to do that a lot of people miss we have to stop feeding the criminal justice system yeah 30% of the inmates in our country are dyslexic. 55% mm -hmm. have a learning disability. 80% don't have a high school diploma or yeah. university diploma. The real crime in this city, in this country, is the educational facilities that create. You know, educate. People who are being denied. We spend $30 billion in education in this city and we produce it very I was a teacher and I used to teach high school equivalency and reading to yes. kids. And when these kids cannot read and they're already in their teens, it's tragic. It, it, it it's is tragic. tragic. With 65 percent of black and brown children in this city never reach proficiency. Oh, and this is not right. And that, that's, all, that's also yeah. a public education issue. But in terms of bail, we also have to understand that bail is not supposed to be punitive. Right. And oftentimes it is punitive, yes, and you have black and, and brown communities being jailed for far longer for misdemeanors and, and petty offenses when they just can't make bail. Right. Bail is supposed right. to ensure that just people return to well said, well yeah, said. They that's return what, to that's what, that's what the case case their did. misdemeanors. So when you look at the bail of those um, petty crimes, uh, those other offenses, that's what she did. She said, let's yeah. have, exactly what you just stated. She said, let's stop putting people in jail because they can't afford when they did not do violent crime, predatory crimes. And she right. did an amazing job of doing You're the mayor-elect. You, 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 and you and this is the one is with the ball when the game is on the line. I'm the best person to be at play right now. Yeah. 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 You know we're going to talk about the bike stuff another time. We want to thank you for coming and sitting with us here again. Mayor-elect Eric Adams. <laughs>
Do you have questions about Medicare options for next year's coverage? I'm Meredith Vieira. The Medicare annual election deadline is just ahead, and now is our chance to check out what's changed. I want to talk to you about My Health Policy, a great resource if you're new to Medicare or if you're already covered. Are there any new Medicare Advantage plans? Yes. Go to MyHealthPolicy.com to review the various options. For example, zero premium plans. I have Medicare Advantage now. Can I switch to another plan? Yes. Compare. If you find coverage you like better, you can switch plans easily. All these Medicare options are too confusing. Can I talk to a real person? Yes, talk with a licensed insurance agent on the phone. Or be face-to-face -face with someone in your community. Start here at MyHealthPolicy.com. Download your free My Medicare guide with no obligation. Or call 1-888-356-1345. Call now. Reddit 
if she was wrong to get revenge by losing a whole lot of weight before the wedding, which left the bride shocked <laughs> and really shocked, claiming she tried to upstage her on the big day. I don't get any of it, but to the bride passes her walk. Right. But then that the girl heard. Right. She's yeah. being taught how to hear it. Right. That she's getting chubby. And this one just says, okay, I'm going to lose weight and I'll fix it. I say, make a play for the groom. <laughs>
Daily Super C is a daily supplement with vitamin C and B vitamins to help energize and replenish. Day Quill Severe is the max strength daytime coffee powered through your day with medicine and new from this. Our strength, our power, our purpose starts with it. So let's start there. With collagen that supports our body from the inside out. Mother Nature has really 
collaborated, at least that part, uh, going for us. Not just here in Maine, New England, and across the Northeast, across much of the country, nice and quiet. So air travel, you got folks, uh, whether you probably haven't hit the road yet, or you have people coming into town tonight. There shouldn't be any weather issues there. Blame it on something else, right? 36 degrees at 5 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 34. It's still a little brisk out there, but the winds are going to settle down overnight. Tomorrow morning, when you wake up for uh, Thanksgiving, you got to go for a little run. Maybe you're doing a run, a turkey trot, or some sort of errands in the morning. It's going to be freezing cold, but it will warm up tomorrow. Uh, looking pretty good there. Spring Point Light. Looking, looking nice. 39 degrees with winds from the northwest gusting to 30, which makes it feel like 29 degrees outside. So our 12-hour forecast, you got sunshine out there, you got uh, clear skies overnight, 37 in Auburn, 39 in Portland right now, and uh, as you take a look at our winds, they're coming in out of the northwest, uh, 22 miles an hour gusting again to 30. So the wind chill is in the upper 20s and low 30s across the area, clear skies across Maine and the northeast, because you quite a bit of action out there in Nova Scotia. Uh, but we are all clear in the northeast if you have people traveling from there. Here's a look at our wind chill forecast. At 5 o'clock, it will feel like 28. At 9 o'clock, 25. Tomorrow morning, 24. But look at that nice little warm up. That's the wind chill. We'll talk to you a little bit about how Thanksgiving looks and Black Friday, where there could be some rain and, yes, snow. All right, Ted, thank you. CMP's permit to build its power corridor through Western Maine is suspended. This decision coming from the commissioner of the Maine DEP. She calls the referendum earlier this month a change in situation that requires suspension. CMP had already stopped work last week and they have 30 additional days to complete some cleanup work. NECEC still has a hearing next month in Maine Business Court where we'll argue that the referendum itself is unconstitutional. Come January 1st, there may be fewer firefighters to respond to calls in Redfield because they don't want to get the COVID-19 vaccine. The fire chief there is saying right now he has 34 volunteer firefighters on his roster. Nine have decided not to participate in the vaccine mandate, so they will not be allowed to go out on calls. The town manager says they can't force volunteers to get the shot, and that's a with other towns.